Yep. And you're live now as well. Okay. So um, meeting this meeting, this June 1st, 2021 meeting of the Board of Registrars. Um, like to call the meeting to order as we are all here and we'll do a roll call attendance. So um, Susan Audette, present. Um, Demetria Shiraz. Yeah, present. Jamie Wagner. Present. And Jacqueline Gardner. Present. Okay. Um, we can all see each other and hear each other. So that's all set. And just mentioning that this meeting is being recorded and um, uh, hel held via Zoom, note, uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's orders for open meeting law meetings. And I want to also let you know that um, as in the past, Amber Martin will be taking minutes um, and she may be called away from the minute taking if someone comes to our counter because we open to the public today and we are only a two person office. So she's covering the counter and she's covering the minute taking. Okay. So that gets that out of the way. Um, Jamie Wagner will be chair for this meeting as she was elected chair for the last meeting. And this meeting is a continuation of the May 24th meeting. Okay, so with that, I'm done talking. Jamie, take it away. <laughs> So the first item on the agenda is public comment. Um, so I do see a few hands raised already. So I suppose we could just start with that if nobody has anything else to add. D, go ahead. So um, I'd like to make a motion. I understand that um, attorney John Boniface is in uh, the audience, um, that he speak before uh, public comment or make some comments. Um, before the re the regular public comment. So my motion is for attorney John Boniface to speak before regular public comment. Is there anybody second that motion? Uh, with no second, um, do we need to vote on it if the motion doesn't carry? No. Um, I do see, I mean, John's second on the list, so I think, I don't know how, if that's the order that they come in, but he is second, so if we let Adrian um, speak first, and then John would be right after her anyway. Okay. Um, Shaw, would you let Adrian speak? Yes. Um, Sue, so do you mind, or Amber, do you mind just, oh, no, I am co-host, sorry. I I think she might have. I see her hand. Her name's John, so she oh, yeah. put her hand down. So that would, by default, let John Boniface be the first to talk. Okay. Uh, I'm waiting for Adrian to speak first. Is that right, or am I speaking? You can go ahead, John. She put her hand down, and you were the next on the list, so she re-raised her hand. So um, you're next on the list to go, anyway. So it's your turn. Okay, uh, thank you everyone for having this time for public comment. Sorry, hold on one more. Uh, thank you everyone for having this time for public comment. My name is John Bonifaz, I'm a resident of Amherst and a long time attorney on constitutional law and voting rights law. I, I'm wanting to speak today on public comment uh, as to the matter before you with respect uh, to the case of Terry Y. Allen at all the Board of Registrars of the Town of Amherst. I know this is not on the agenda for today's meeting, but I have submitted a letter uh, to the Amherst Board of Registrars uh, yesterday, which discusses this case and why I am urging that the Board of Registrars enter immediately into a consent decree with the plaintiffs to be approved by the court in which the board agrees first to certify the wrongly invalidated signatures with the voter veto petition, admits therefore that the voter veto petition met the 5% threshold and establishes the date for the election on the issue specified in the voter veto petition. As you know, this case is now before the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court where it was recently filed. And the plaintiffs have presented overwhelming evidence that for at least 76 voters in Amherst, their right was violated 
to have their signatures validated on this petition. The constitutional right of voters to have their signatures validated on petitions for local ballot measures when their signatures and addresses are substantially as registered, quote, unquote, is as fundamental as their constitutional right to vote in an election. In this complaint, which I urge you, each of you to review carefully if you have not already done so, uh, and it is available via the link I provide in the letter in that footnote, uh, the plaintiffs show that the board wrongly disqualified signatures where the signatories did not sign a middle name or initial on the petition, even though the middle name or initial was listed on the town's voter rolls, or did not sign a middle name or initial on the petition when the middle name or initial was not listed on the voter rolls in direct violation uh, of existing law, did not abbreviate lane or street on the petition while the address on the voter rolls abbreviated such words such as lane or street. Uh, the signatures were denied who, people who live on an avenue named Crossbrook spelled out the complete name of their street on the petition while the voter rolls erroneously list the street name as Cross BRK. Uh, people who did not include the abbreviation or words court, ST or RDG after their street address when the voter rolls included these words, even though there are no other streets in town with the same name as the streets where the signatories reside and included in their address on the petition, the name of the town in which they resided, Amherst. These are different signatures that were denied. The state, Massachusetts and or zip code, even though the name of the town, state and or zip code was not listed on the residential address section of the voter rolls but was included in the mailing address section. These are just some of the examples in the complaint of people's signatures which were denied. Now, at your May 10th meeting, the Board of Registrars discussed the open meeting law complaint, which had been filed on May 4th, 2021 by Amherst attorney Carol Gray, alleging serious open meeting law violations in connection with the board's meeting on April 20. First, 2021. During that discussion, as you may remember, board member Jamie Wagner asked specifically whether there was any other way to review the petition signatures which Assistant Town Clerk Amber Martin had disqualified during the certification process other than for the board to declare its April 2021 20, meeting as null and void in light of the allegations. The town attorney responded that the only avenue available to the petitioners to seek such a review would be for them to challenge in court the disqualification of the signatures in question. However, the town attorney did not include in that response the options available to the board if such a lawsuit were filed. Now that voters whose petition signatures were disqualified have filed this litigation, the board can opt to waste tens of thousands of taxpayer dollars in legal fees fighting this case in court, or it can opt to settle the matter with the plaintiffs via consent decree as described. To make this decision in a responsible manner in accordance with your duties as members of the Board of Registrars to protect the rights of all voters of Amherst, you should carefully read the plaintiff's complaint. And based on the strength of the complaint, the Board of Registrars could with the assistance of town council propose a consent decree to the plaintiffs to settle this case. You know, I know the town manager has responded already to this letter saying he and only he has the authority to engage in discussions regarding litigation where the town is a party. And as have I have responded to him, as you've seen via the response that was sent this morning to suggest that that kind of discussion should exclude the Board of Registrars, which is the named defendant in this case, is to prevent this board from carrying out its duty to protect the voters of Amherst, all the voters. This is not to say that that discussion should occur without the town manager or without the town attorney. It should proceed with those individuals involved. But the Board of Registrars has a role here and you are the ones that have been named in this lawsuit. The integrity 
of the Amherst Board of Registrars is on the line in this case. With the initiation of this lawsuit, you now have the opportunity to resolve this matter and to vindicate the constitutional rights of Amherst voters whose signatures on this voter veto petition were wrongly disqualified. I urge you to do so. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, any any discussion from the board regarding um, what Attorney Bonifaz just? We should, should absolutely result? not be discussing. It's okay. first of all not on the agenda, and we were asked not to discuss it. Okay, it's pending litigation. So we were asked not to discuss the um, the. I understand not discussing it during public comment, but. Um, where is it asked for us not to discuss? Can't we decide that as a board of registrar to discuss litigation that is uh, the, our, town, our town charter puts everything on the town manager's office and he's already addressed this. So if you have questions, you need to contact the town manager. Oh, I, I will, but mm -hmm. um, I'm asking fellow board of registrars, we can decide to discuss it. I'm not going to, I'm not discussing it. Well, again, I'd like to, I'll be making a motion later. Okay, I think make, make, make a motion because I'm not going to discuss we anything. Need to be on we, record. We well, it's, public, it's public comment right I now. Understand. So I just I understand. want to, you know, make that. I want to also make my position clear too. Certainly appreciate that fellow board of registrar. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, I strongly advise against any discussion of this matter. Um, this matter was is not on the board's agenda and it was not unanticipated that it could be raised today there was a conscious decision not to put this matter on the agenda and therefore any discussion of this matter in my opinion would constitute a violation of the open meeting law um, in addition to the fact that it remains my opinion that the board of registrars does not have the authority to discuss this without the express approval and authority conferred by the town manager. So I just wanna make it clear, I did ask for it to be on the agenda. So just so we're being transparent. Thank you, Attorney Carbo. It was not accepted to be on the agenda. Okay. So next on the list for public comment is Sarah McKee. Thank you very much. Commissioner Wagner, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I can Thank hear you. you. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Um, I'm a member of the, I've lived in Amherst for 20 years. I'm a member of the bar in the District of Columbia. And one thing that disturbs me very much about the case filed in the Supreme Judicial Court is the precedent set. Um, the town has taken the position that yes, uh, there might be constitutional rights violated here and we can do nothing about it unless you sue. And this is placing a burden on the voters of the town to find an attorney and sue in order to get their constitutional rights from the very town in which they live. It's exceedingly disturbing and I am very sorry to see it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so it looks like the next comment is a, a phone in, Sean. I'm not sure if that requires a special to get them in or if it's somebody there. I don't see a name. They should be permitted to speak. Hello. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can hear you. Okay, uh, my name is Vincent O'Connor. I'm calling from a friend's phone. And I would like to present to the Board of Registrars and the other town officials involved um, a matter that I think I, I would have hoped your, your council would have advised you of, but that the public should be aware of. First, the penalties that can be visited upon public officials um, under uh, 42 U.S. Code Section 1983, which allows public officials to be sued if they act under color of law to deprive people of their civil rights. 
and constitutional rights. And this is certainly what I'm seeing over the last month. This is not a game. And if it's being treated as a game by anyone, they are really uh, taking chances with them themselves. And I urge you to look that section up. Additionally, when so this is a federal law, and when cases are filed against multiple individuals, as it, it would be in this case, the individuals who are charged with investigating these types of activities, a federal bureau known to all of us, um, also has the possibility under 18 U.S. Code Section 242 of bringing criminal charges against the individuals involved who do consciously, deliberately violate people's civil rights. Um, this is not a game, ladies and gentlemen, and it is being treated as a game by some of the parties um, as though they can act with impunity against the citizens of the town, spend their money, and, um, and be completely personally harmless. This is a very foolish course of action on your part, and I urge you to cease it. Fi additionally and finally, the taxpayers of this town, 10 of them at least, have the right to go to court. And if this activity on your part to deny people their civil rights is found to be blatantly beyond the scope of your duties and maliciously done, then the expenditures that are being made for the town council's office and other activities are going to come out of your pockets and not out of the taxpayers' pockets. So please be aware that this is not some kind of a game where we're using the taxpayers' monies against them because you could end up in personally liable and I think that it, this kind of activity needs to cease now. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Um, next up on the list for comment is Peggy Matthews Nielsen. Hello. I'm Hi, Peggy, we can hear you. Okay, great. Hello, I'm Peggy Matthews Nielsen, an Amherst resident from District 5. Amherst has a resident, I'm sorry, Amherst has a reputation and a public image as a socially conscious progressive college town. So one of the last things expected here would be the kind of voter suppression taking place in conservative parts of the country. Indeed, our new town council form of government promised us more democracy and a provision of the new charter provides the voter veto petition as the democratic form of redress available to residents when they disagree with the town council vote on an issue. And yet the first test of the democratic process of Amherst's new town charter failed, but it failed only because petition signatures were wrongly disqualified. In this case, residents signed the voter veto petition to bring the library project to a townwide vote, whether they support the library project or not, out of concern about what the post COVID-19 budget impact this $37 million project would have on our three other capital projects, particularly the new school project that will be vulnerable from a tax override vote. Amherst residents gathered 1,088 signatures on the petition in only two weeks. The town clerk's office had 10 days to certify signatures. Residents were dismayed to learn that the town clerk's office reviewed 1,088 signatures in a single day and in its great haste disqualified 223 signatures resulting in the petition being 22 signatures short. It turns out many of these signatures were wrongly disqualified. Many were the lawful signatures of longtime registered Amherst voters and 92 affidavits have since been submitted to the town to attest to this fact. The town clerk's office has acknowledged that mistakes were made. And yet the town of Amherst has so far refused to redress this wrong, instead requiring its residents 
to go to court for redress. This failure on the town's part to correct its mistakes made in undue haste is tantamount to voter suppression. In con contrast, in 2019, our neighbor to the north, Greenfield, Mass, used a voter veto petition to bring their $19 million library project to a townwide vote. One of Greenfield's at-large counselors is quoted as saying, the bottom line is we want people to vote on this. We want as many people as possible to vote on this. It's the right thing. This is an example of more democracy. So my question to you is, why is less democracy acceptable in Amherst? Why would the town resist bringing this project to a townwide vote if they are confident that going forward with the project is the will of Amherst voters? And why is voter suppression in any form tolerated in our town? Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Um, next up is Adrian. Are you there, Adrian? I think she's been, she or he is the next two hands. I don't know if Sean has anything there, if we should. Yeah, bypass. Adrian, um, I've, I've hit the ask to unmute button on both connections and neither one, neither one appear to be working. All right, well, why don't we skip to Sarah McKee and then we'll check back with Adrian see if we can get that figured out. Okay. Um, Sarah, are you there? I am, I am, but I've spoken already. Oh. Your hand was up again, so it must have died. Oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's okay. Oh. So then I guess uh, maybe try again with Adrian or I don't know if Adrian wants to um, try to put her hand or her put their hand down and raise again. Yeah. The other thing you could try Adrian is hold down the alt key on your keyboard and press A. If you're using a uh, Windows PC. All right. Well, Sean Burke has just put um, a hand up, so why don't we get to Sean and okay. then try Adrian again. Hello? Yep, we got you, Sean. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, uh, Sean Burke. I'm an Amherst resident for the last uh, 37 years at this particular address and uh, with my wife, Rita. And um, I went around with that uh, form to, to get signatures from our neighbors. So her, Rita's name was the first one on the list on the form. Mine was the second. And then I went around and got the rest of our neighbors. And a couple of our neighbors were also kicked off the list. And mine wasn't at the same address, the same, the same last name, same everything, uh, uh, except the first names, obviously. Um, and so I just don't understand how something like that can happen. And, and the, the review, I, I question the review of all of these to begin with, because uh, as, the, as uh, the attorney earlier uh, spoke and said how, uh, because of the uh, people wrote the lane out instead of LN and so forth and so on. And I don't understand, I mean, who gives people the, the, uh, um, authority to, to make a decision like that when it, it's it's not obvious that it, what was there was meant to be said. Um, and, and also, I just don't, uh, I, I agree with, I think it was a few weeks back when, when this board had a, a, a meeting after everything happened and um, uh, the board wanted to put a, a, a question forward to, to uh, um, a limit or to uh, uh, ex um, what do I want to say? Um, redo whatever was done back then, and, and uh, two of the vote, two of the board members said they wanted to erase it. One board member said that she didn't, 
and the town clerk was was allowed to vote. Now I don't. I I suppose that her gig allows her to vote sometimes, but when it when when it concerns the the uh, your uh, voting rights in the town and that particular person I don't think lives in this town and is not a town resident. So how I just, I, and so her vote made it a tie. So everything stayed as it was and it staying as it was brings us to this point and a bunch of lawyers and a whole ton of money to, to, to question somebody's right to vote and, and question the fact that the, uh, uh, the reasoning that that was brought forth was very questionable and, 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 I just don't understand how this can get carried on and carried on and carried on without the town who is at fault really to just come out and say, my bad, we were wrong. Let's, let's be correct here and, and not put everybody through all of this. So that's my statement. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, now do want to try Adrian again? I'll know though. Nope, there we go. Adrian, are you there? Uh, I am here okay. and with with great apologies to you all on a an erratic um, computer right now. I would like to say my name is Adrian Terizzi. Although I'm a, a longtime member and, and uh, for the League of Women Voters, I'm speaking strictly for myself today. Just briefly, I am a 50 plus year resident citizen of the town of Amherst, a town that I've contributed to both with my volunteer activity uh, and my heart in this town for its well being, its health, safety, and welfare. And I would like to say, without replicating everyone else who's spoken, that we are in an impasse as a town. I won't speak to the legalities or the illegalities or the mistakes that were made, but I can tell you that something is, is wrong and has to be corrected without going, into, um, without going into all of the issues at hand. Please find a way and come together. The town manager, the board of registrars, the lawyer for the town, as well as the lawyer for the plaintiffs. I also want to add that I was not involved in any way with this voter veto petition, but as a citizen and as a longtime member of the League of Women Voters, it seems to me the right thing to do is to acknowledge the right of the citizens to have redress. I wanna thank everyone. I appreciate the public comment period and your long uh, running meetings. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Adrian. Um, I, well, if can just pop back up, someone's going to assume that that was just her computer going crazy. Um, any, anybody else uh, before we close? All right, I have um, CJG, Sean, if you want to let them. And Thank you very much. Uh, Carol Gray here at 815 Southeast Street. Um, I want to thank all the speakers who have been presenting so far, I assume that people can hear me, correct? Yes? Okay, you got it. I can hear you, Carol. Thank you so much. Um, I think a, a lot of the speakers made such eloquent comments. I would encourage anyone who's written their comments to email them to the town clerk to ask that they be incorporated with minutes. I think that these meetings are very important and your jobs as registrars is critically important. And I really appreciate that you are spending the time to let citizens speak and residents and to, uh, and to take the time that is required to uh, listen to these comments. I'm gonna speak to the open meeting law um, complaint that I filed uh, on May 14th. Um, I'll start off thanking the board for their diligence in meeting promptly to uh, approve minutes. Uh, I haven't seen the minutes yet, if there are any draft minutes for May 24th, but hopefully they will be uh, available at some point. Um, and I, I would request that um, any documents that the board is looking at uh, for this meeting or, or any future meetings, especially since we're not in person and there can't be like documents on the back table to pick up. Uh, if the board could please make those available uh, with the agendas in the same place where they 
posted the draft minutes before, that would be appreciated. Um, in terms of the open meeting law complaint, um, so there were three uh, parts to that complaint. Uh, the first two dealt with minutes. And uh, as you know, um, there were three minutes that were uh, uh, three board minutes that we were looking at, which was April 21st, uh, May 7th, and May 10th. Uh, I found online, and actually I emailed it to the board, uh, hopefully you saw my email, uh, a copy of slides that I found online from uh, KP Law that talked about approval of minutes. And uh, one of the slides says, um, open session, I'm reading from the slide, open session minutes must be created and approved in a timely manner. Approval must occur generally within the next three meetings or within 30 days, whichever is later. Minutes are public records as of the moment of their creation, regardless of whether they have been approved. Uh, the second slide said open session minutes must be created and approved. And it says new regulations provide that approval must occur generally within the next three meetings or within 30 days, whichever is later. So I raise this because uh, as you know, the April 21st minutes were not approved uh, within 30 days. Uh, and uh, I wanted to say that I very much appreciated what attorney Corbo said in the May 24th meeting. Uh, at minute 47, uh, he said, with respect to the three matters that have been raised as to the first two matters regarding the timely creation and approval of minutes, I would have to agree that you do, did not meet the timeliness requirement for the approval of the April 21st meeting because they were not approved within three meetings or 30 days. So there is a violation of the open meeting law. Um, I appreciate that you're doing everything in your power to rectify that. Uh, the remedies sought for the open meeting law violation were to create minutes and post them promptly, to have a training on the open meeting law, and to caution all parties, um, including attorney Goldberg, who talked at length about the open meeting law violation during the May 7th meeting when it was not on the agenda, to caution everyone to please follow the open meeting law. Attorney Goldberg, mentioned in that meeting that she thought that the open meeting law complaint uh, of May 4th was a red herring, but uh, I think the open meeting law is a very important rule and uh, it's the law. Um, I noticed looking online, and I, this was part of the open meeting law complaint, there is an archive for all minutes of all boards and committees and the board of registrars archive for the minutes link has nothing. It has a sample of what um, minutes might look like. Uh, I would ask that all minutes be posted there. I learned from the town clerk that since 2006, there have been nine sets of minutes from the board of registrars, none of which um, we learned in the last meeting were from this current board. Uh, but all of those nine minutes, sets of minutes, I think should be posted in the archive. I have requested them and haven't received them yet. Um, so um, I, I hope that um, the, the board will um, agree with what attorney Corbo said in the last meeting that there is indeed a violation of the open meeting law and that they will um, think it beneficial to have a training on the open meeting law. I do think it's important that the training be done by an independent um, party, not KP law. Um, and I would think that the secretary of state or attorney general might uh, have ideas about such trainings. Um, and um, that is the conclusion of my remarks. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Carol. Um, I see Adrian back up again, but I don't want to assume that there was not another comment, but I don't know uh, if you want to check Sean or if we just will move on from there. Adrian should be unmuted right now. Adrian, did you have more to say or was your hand just up again? No, maybe nothing. All right. Um, and Sean Burke is back up again also. So I'm not sure if there was another additional comment or if that is it. Would you like me to unmute Sean? Sure. We'll just check in with him just to make sure. Hi. Actually, it's Rita, but I don't know how to show my name because he's the one who signed on. Would I be able to make a comment? Yeah, that, um, that's fine. Go right ahead, Rita. Okay, so I'm Rita Burke and I live at 50 Henry Street with Sean. 
And I wanted to say, I can't possibly be as eloquent as so many other people have been, but um, this isn't personal. And yet somehow it feels like it. I'm sure it feels like it to you as well. And it certainly feels like it to a lot of us. Um, and as much as attorney Corbo wants to make it, it's not about the library either. And I feel shame on him for trying to infer otherwise. It's unfortunately and unintentionally become about voter rights. Um, it's a mess. And what started as a look into how and why people's signatures were rejected because people like myself um, were baffled um, that I would not know how to write my name and my address after living at this particular one for 37 years. Um, I, I, I can't, I keep going back to things like um, Clerk Audette, I don't know her personally, I have nothing against her, but she stated a number of times throughout these meetings, and I've watched them all, that Amber Martin, again, someone I don't know, was trained and experienced for the task that she was charged with, yet both Miss Martin um, and the clerk have also stated um, that Miss Martin was not aware of um, the clerk having already the authority to verify signatures. Meanwhile, both also have stated that the meeting to grant Miss Martin that authority was for transparency. Uh, terms like icing on the cake and redundant. That seems contradictory to me. Either Miss Martin knew and didn't need the meeting or she didn't know and thought she needed the meeting. Um, there's just so much here that has been discussed in all of these meetings and clearly much of it has been a challenge not only for the public, but for the board members themselves to sort out. Doesn't that in itself indicate that not the proper procedures and process were understood or in place? I mean, the system's flawed. It wasn't intended to be, I'm sure, and it's a very big surprise to a lot of people that it is, I'm also sure. But anyone looking at the examples of the signatures that were rejected would have to understand that this was not, as the clerk stated, a case of two people can look at the same signature and see it differently. That's not what happened with my case, I'm sure. Rita K. Burke, 50 Henry Street. Um, and just how confident should the voters be when an example is given by the clerk, which, for example, the absence of a junior or senior designation on a name as a reason for disqualification, when it is actually not a reason for disqualification. It's specified as not a reason for disqualification. We're not going to get through all of these issues um, and fix them all, but we can fix the entire situation. Um, and that just means like you teach your children, own up to a mistake, fix it and try not to repeat it. I do urge the board to settle this. I think the dissent decree sounds like a wonderful way to do it um, because otherwise this is gonna go on and on. And we already have seen the camps start to split even more dramatically in our town and it's doing everyone a grave disservice. Um, stop digging your heels in, do what's right. That's my opinion. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Rita. Um, so we're back to just Adrian. So I think with no other hand being raised, we can um, close the public comment section of our meeting. If, uh, Jamie. Sounds good. Nope, Adrian, are you there again? Jamie, uh, please, um, with great apologies, please ignore the raised and lowered hand. I've okay. already said what I wanted to. Thank you for your patience. Right. Thank you. Okay, so I think then we're um, good with the public comment section of our meeting. So um, I think the second topic on our meeting was the review excuse and approve me. the minutes. So yeah, oh. excuse me, Jamie. I would like to move that the Board of Registrars schedule an executive session to discuss the lawsuit. 
Under which section D? There's many sections that you utilize under the executive session. Which section? Legal. In other words, section E, part D, there's, there's a, you have to choose which section under the executive session list. I don't. There's a whole I, list. No, just, I, under legal. Is there somewhere that that can be pulled up to see the different sections? That would be a great idea, Jamie. Attorney Corbo, would you have happen to have that by any chance available in your records that's easy to get at? Oh, so you don't have it? Sue? I have a hard copy. Uh -huh. I have a hard copy. I don't have an electronic version. I see. Yes. Um, through you, Madam Chair, uh, I can pull it up, but I don't know how to share my screen. Sean, is that something that, can I tell you how to find it? And you should, yeah, you should have the ability to share your screen, but yeah, if it's easier just to tell me if it's um, something quick, um, I'm happy to pull it up and, and display it. Okay, can you get on to, um, all right, well, let me try to do it first. All right. Okay. Um, I can certainly Google it myself, but yeah, I think we all need to see those sections and I'm entitled to see those. So what you're referring to, Sue. Yeah. Under MGL chapter 30A, section 21A, I think this is. Yeah. All right, am I sharing this now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, through you, Madam Chair, this section, chapter, this is uh, chapter 30A, section 21 of the Massachusetts General Laws sets forth the reasons that a board um, can enter executive session. If, if a board is going to enter executive session, its meeting notice must identify one of these specific reasons. Um, and then when the meeting comes, its vote must also reference one of these specific reasons. I don't think I can make the whole thing fit on a page, so I'll leave it here and um, let me know when you're ready to move on. So oh, I believe I can restate my motion. Do you want to find what section you want to use? If you yeah, want to so I'll and I'll restate my motion with the section. Yeah, so I move that the board, the, the board of registrars schedule um, an executive session to discuss the lawsuit based on uh, section three, which is to uh, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declare so i think that specifically speaks to what we're dealing with i would second the motion um so i think we need to vote on that so um let's do a roll call vote i guess to audet you vote um and abstain. Yes no. abstain all right jacqueline gardner you vote yes or no no until we talk to the uh, town attorney or uh, town manager would that, would this meeting be that you're doing, would this include, or would that kind of include the town manager within what you're trying to do in this? Oh, I think that's up to our discretion, but we need to, so my motion simply is about scheduling an executive session to discuss the impending litigation. So I think it's up to our discretion as the board of registrars to invite 
whomever, including the town manager. They certainly can attend. All right. So Jackie voted no. He survived your vote. I, I am in favor. Um, and Jamie Wagner votes yes. Vote to schedule a meeting to discuss this. All right, so that's two yeses and one no. So I guess we should talk about scheduling a meeting. Um, I guess my, my thought would be nice to talk, but I think I would like to have like the town manager present and um, as I think an attorney, Boniface's email um, kind of had, I think, suggested that that um, also whoever needed to be involved be involved so right. i don't know if you all guys want to think about a meeting time now or if we're able to because it's not a public thing can we do that over email and find dates that work for everybody or do we have to do that right now i think scheduling it over email um but by next week would be preferable all right so we will after this meeting i guess work to find a time that works for us to me and go from there. Um, so next on the agenda is the review of the minutes. Um, I think we should just break them down and in my opinion, do them one at a time. So if we start with April 21st, I don't know if everybody wants a few minutes to review the um, changes and then we can talk about it. Can I share my that. screen? Yes, please. See who can share. Who can start sharing? Okay, sharing options. Oh, let's see. Screen. Let me make it bigger. Okay. Also, share Jamie. Um, I don't know if this is the time to bring up what was. Uh, brought up by attorney Carol Gray, but I also had a question for attorney Carball because that meeting, he did say um, that there was an open meeting law violation because of the, we didn't file the minutes or the meeting, the meeting minutes for April 21st were not created when the, within the required 30 days. And he answered that in an affirmative. So um, I think that needs to uh, be discussed at some point. Okay, um, Attorney Culver, do you have anything to speak to that or um, do you think that's fine to do before or after? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, we do have a an item on the agenda to specifically talk about the response to the open meeting law complaint. I did provide each of the board members with a proposed um, draft response. Uh, I'll leave it to you as to whether you want me to address that specific issue now or wait till later. Okay, I think we can wait till later. I think that is a good time for that. So once everybody's done reviewing these minutes and the changes, if anybody has any comment, just let me know. So these are the, the clerk's changes. I'll put up um, these changes as well. Let me see if I can let me see if I can do that. Yeah, it looks like you incorporated Oops. my changes. Yeah, we had the um, same thing. We went back and listened to well, no, that's not just oh, it. So uh, mainly that there was a difference. This should be uh, two to where you have okay. number two voted two zero one. Mm -hmm. That should be two to zero because uh, Amber, from my um, looking at the video, I wasn't there, but I looked at the video, Amber didn't vote. Correct, we agreed. Zero, one, uh, two is yeses, zero is noes, and one is, is um, absent. 
Oh, okay. So just to make sure it reflects that um, Amber Martin did not vote. Okay. It states it in the wording. Yep. So yep. I've got them both up. Can you see them both? No, we cannot see them both. I've only got one on my end, too. Hmm, let's I've see. only got one. Okay. I'll have to pull one up at a time then because I, I just opened Word twice and I've got them side by side on my monitor, but that didn't work. All right. Well, everyone received D's changes. I think that might be the easier way to go if you're looking at your hard, co your hard copy of D's changes compared to these here. Does that work? That works for me. I just, I just want to state that what's important in that as someone who's part of the Board of Register who was not in attendance at the meeting, but looked at the video that, you know, there, there's a big difference with, you know, Amber Martin not voting um, if she's if she's representing and in your place, Sue, as the clerk. So was she or, you know, there's again, seems to be some contradiction or some uh, confusion as to Amber's role. And she didn't, you know, she didn't abstain. So I'm, I'm just confused if she, if she is in your place, then basically wouldn't she have voted as you vote with us? I think, um, Amber, would you like to speak to that? Is she still here? She might be at the counter. I'm still here. Oh, okay. So I think what we're discussing now is the meeting minutes of that actual meeting. So I think what's in front of us um, is pretty accurate as far as the meeting goes. Uh, whether I abstained or it's a, a no vote, I think that's up to the board to decide. So if you guys want to vote on that, um, feel free I'm to sorry. vote on that. There, there shouldn't be no ambiguity about it. So could you, you state what, what you did do? I did not vote. And on April 21st, of you did 2021, I did not vote. Okay, so then so, I just want to make sure you shouldn't be listed abstaining, but you did not vote. Okay, and you did not abstain. So we need to just put that in the record. Isn't that what it says? Yes. It just says Amber Martin did not vote. And she did not abstain. Sure, we can add that in. Thank you. Yeah. That, do we have a consensus on that? That's fine with me. It's okay. it's okay with me too. I'm going to make the changes live here, okay? Great. Okay. Appreciate it. So I will say Amber Martin did not vote or abstain, okay? Or? Nor abstain, yes. Nor, yeah. Okay. But I am just curious about one thing, but could something be put in there as far as there was no discussion in reg by, I, about the um, um, petitions? Or we can just let that go. I mean, the purpose of the meeting. Yeah, okay, that's sufficient, okay. This is to reflect what the purpose of okay. the meeting was and what was said at that meeting. So then Sue, um, under number two, under voted, then um, it should read accurately two to zero. Um, so it does not reflect one as an abstention. That's right, you weren't there. You weren't even there, okay. I'm thinking of it as, as absent, not abstention, absent. Yeah, okay. again, okay. it's confusing. Yeah, okay. Yep, Thank yep. You. So can I make a motion to approve the April 21st minute as presented? Um, actually, it's a, actually, a, sorry to interrupt. It's actually as amended. As yes, amended? We, yeah. As amended. Okay. So I make a motion to approve the minutes from April 21st um, as amended. I second. All right. So All right. we'll just take a vote. Um, so Jacqueline Gardner, how do you vote? Oh, in favor of that one. To Audet. Aye. Uh, D. Shabazz. Yes, aye. And Jamie Wagner votes yes. So we will um, approve the minutes from the April 21st meeting as amended, and they will be 
uh, on file with the town clerk's office. Yep. Okay, those those are and done. We will discuss, I guess, the further open meeting law violation regarding these minutes later. So I will set those aside for now. And if you want to review the May 7th minutes, um, quickly before while Sue's getting them up on the screen, and then we will discuss those. Do you see them? Yes, and this is the one you have up to. You have the chair. Okay, the minutes have been um, edited so by your office. office. Yep, after listening to the video. Okay, so on number two, yeah, I see, well, I guess that's the same thing, but it, it does seem rather descriptive. Sue Adet nominated herself as chair, uh, and then I nominated myself as chair, but, um, okay, so there should be, and there's a lot of description. Yeah, I objected to Sue uh, as chair for the reasons that uh, she's the ex officio member of the board. Um, I would appreciate that my objection uh, being stated correctly, and I don't see it reflected there. Let's see, hold on. Okay, so uh, right after here. Yeah, so after it's an under two and then motion, there was discussion and I sent in my notes, I objected to Sue Audette being chair since she was the ex officio member of the board. Mm -hmm. And then Attorney Goldberg responded to that objection saying that the election was just for that day and that at Monday's meeting, the group would need to take up the issue. So I believe the discussion that you have on, um, okay. yeah. So I, here we go. Right after the motion, so here. So do you, uh, Jamie and Jackie agree with that comment? Should we add that in? I'm okay with that being added in. Okay. So should I read it again? No, I have it in front of me. I could, should just copy and paste it. Hold on. And I have a question about minutes. I don't know if Paul Sue's doing this, if anybody has any insight to it, but I know on another board that I'm a member of, Farm Bureau, we, I do the minutes for them. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, I've always been told that minutes are basically, I mean, obviously you get in your, your voting, you know, your second motions and your voting and stuff. And then it's basically um, minutes are to touch on um, points. And I mean, some of our minutes, these minutes for the board of registrars get pretty, um, lengthy with kind mm -hmm. of like the backstory and I know that there's you know necessary times for that to happen but sometimes I wonder is, it, is there rules for what the minutes are supposed to look like requirements that they need to meet minimum maximum like I mean it just seems like sometimes we could get into a day's worth of minutes um for you know I and again just looking at some of the further down these minutes where we have, you know, everybody that spoke in the public comment, there's a lot of um, their sort, you know, what they were talking about in there. And I know that for certain situations, that's important to capture that stuff. But is there a, a minimum that we're set that we need to address within the minutes? That is actually in the open meeting law guide, uh, what's to be covered. It doesn't need to be a transcript, but um, I don't have the open meeting law guide in front of me. Hold on. And it isn't a transcript. I think if we looked at the transcript for the video, it'd be 
it's almost 80 to 90 pages long. So it's actually capturing the main points. I think the problem becomes when you have issues as important as this, um, that people want their, um, their objections captured. And so when I corrected the minutes, that is, that is, was my intent. You know, whether it's objections or in the affirmative, people want their, their ideas captured, particularly having to do with this issue. Madam Chair, through, through you, um, with respect to the detail level of detail that needs to be in the minutes, um, it needs to be enough that a reasonable person who was not at the meeting can look at the minutes and have an understanding of what went on. Um, as um, Ms. Odette stated, um, it doesn't need to be a verbatim transcript, but um, some anything short of that is really within the discretion of the board as to what level of detail you think is needed in a particular circumstance. So in, in other circumstances, it might be enough to have bullet points summarizing the, the general discussion. Um, and in other cases, more detail might be necessary. Um, so it, it really is something that, that the board has discretion over um, as to whether or not to include a lot of detail. Um, and as was pointed out here, you know, this is a matter of of significant public interest. So it's probably worthwhile to have more detail rather than less. That sounds good as long as we're meeting what we need to do for them. So thank you for the clarification. So after the motion, I have included G Dee's comment that she had submitted. So that's in there now. Um, can I scroll down? Are we past this section? Um, oh, how about I go right? I'll stop right here. And a lot of what we did too was just house cleaning, keeping things consistent with you know titles and order of names and things like that. Okay, so are we in the public comment section? Yes. Okay. So yeah, my my corrections attempted to sum up uh, what people were uh, commenting on. We added a lot of that too. So um, without, you know, doing word for word. See, yep, public no. comment, here we go, okay. Okay, so I would submit for Jeffrey Lee that again, in summation, um, my, my revision includes the 5% of Amherst registered voters, the citizens' right to wonder why there's so many signatures were rejected. I mean, that's at the heart of, um, the, of the complaint. Um, and that, you know, I, I wrote tedious task of certification was assigned to an inexperienced assistant clerk. I think you know, we can decide whether to put that in, but that is part of the complaint. It has come up before. Um, and that, uh, again, Jeffrey Lee said that they felt compelled to complete it in less than 24 hours when the town charter allows for 10 days and urges the board to review the rejected signatures, including the more than 85 for which uh, signer affidavits have been submitted. Uh, and do what is best for Amherst, which has come up before. So that really truncates Jeffrey Lee's statement. And um, I'm fine with adding that and if we're gonna do it with other ones also. Can you see Dee's comments right now? No, we still cannot. can't see that one. Jeez, I don't know how that. Did I cover the ones that you can see up or no? Um, you, you can still see what you've been seeing. I'm still learning how to use this with the screen share. Right. So that's not. Those are not my edits. 
Okay, so that's okay. All right. But that works out for me. Okay, good. Because I can cut and paste easy, easier. But on that one too, I, I would like to have that word an in, inexperienced assistant clerk. The, the inexperienced part just cut out. I think it's unnecessary to do name calling in minutes. I agree with Jacqueline on that. And especially who is he to judge? You know? <laughs> well, it was his statement, not ours. I understand, but again, it it, I don't think it should be in there, period. I That's, just added it to the uh, other one. Can everyone see that? Does come up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so for Jasna uh, Reggie, there um, again, it doesn't reflect what the heart of what they were saying. So um, said the petition drive was conducted uh, so, pain so painstakingly during the pandemic and so many valid signatures were rejected. Signers were shocked because they were longtime residents and registered voters and that they went to the additional trouble to fill out affidavits and go and get them notarized. Um, very disturbed that one in five had their names thrown out. I mean, what it speaks to as a record is um, the, 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 some of the, con, uh, the themes that if we were to look at this, you know, in some type of social and behavioral analysis, that there are themes that recur. Um, and looking at these themes that recur, that they might have a point. So I do think it's important to document as much as we can, particularly in this initial meeting on April 21st. I mean, on, I'm sorry, on May when they were able, the public to speak on um, May 7th. Yeah, May 7th. I'd like to make a comment, just the one in five thrown out, um, just for you ladies to know, when certifying, there's always an, uh, a percentage of signatures that do not certify. Mm. And pretty average number is anywhere between 15 and 25%, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. just wanna throw that out there. Okay, thanks for the okay. context, yeah. Yeah, I know, um, I think it was out in the public, someone mentioned the charter signatures. I think it was like 22% that did not certify when we had charter questions. So just, just letting you know that. Okay. Good to but then know. again, too, you know, there is like the way I see it, what, what stuffs them black is pretty much like summarized it. I mean, it's like extra. Well, anyway, just leave it there. So is there a way to um, cut and paste there? Yeah, if we if everyone's in agreement, I will. I'm waiting for an agreement. And I'm fine with, I mean, I think if we've done it for one person where we've kind of like expanded on what their context of their speech, you know, go through and um, just do it with everybody that we have on there. Um, just so we don't have any issues with why was Jeffrey Lee's statement more important than Jasna's statement. And but I'm, I think if for one, I mean, I agree that I feel like the summary is just more to the point and it kind of captures it all, but um, mm -hmm. But people have the option also reviewing, sorry, that they have the option to review the, the video too online if they wanted more details on it. Because this was a three hour meeting. Right, Jacqueline, but these are official. Um, I understand, I, I understand that, I, and I said that. So we show the full transcript is much longer. These, these are summations that, mm -hmm. um, and revisions that I'm making to, um, their comments. 
So Jamie, can you let me know if we talk about each person, you know, after you've read their comments, if we're in agreement, I'll cut and paste them into their, because I know we took okay. out the word inexperienced under Jeffrey Lee, but um, instead yeah. of just copying all of her, all of Dee's suggestions, I, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now if you have Dazna updated, if you go to Maria Kapiki. Oh, I think the word board has to be capitalized. I'm just going to put a capital B in there. Okay. So I think, again, going along with the other um, amendments that we should take um, these suggestions. I don't see anything in there otherwise. Voting, voting rules should be R-O-L-L-S, just FYI. Okay. Jackie, you agree? with that one too? Should I? Uh... Yeah, just go ahead on with it. Yeah. Okay. Just gonna do that. And... But are these direct quotes in red? Pretty much. Or are they There's, summaries? It is a, sum because, it's a summary. Because again, this is like six on hand in hand and half a dozen on other. Do you want the short summary or you want the longer summary? Well, some of the summaries aren't really accurate and reflecting um, to me but who their, their judge, main points. But who are we to judge that? We're just putting down the facts. No, nope, not all of it is, is again, factual. So that's why I took the time. That's what I'm saying, to, to summarize it. it. Yeah. Because nothing, nothing is ever going to be, shall we say, that factual. Okay, I disagree that we can get as close as we can to um, their main points and intent. I think their, their main points have been captured. That's the point I'm making. Yeah, I don't think so. And that, that's why the revision. Well, opinion, right personal there. opinion. Um, you're welcome to listen to it. And... Um, I know, I know what, what, what I can and cannot do, but thank okay. you very much for your permission. Same, Jacqueline. So are we moving on to Rita Burke? <laughs> uh, there's uh, Denise Barbarette. I, I mean, it's, there was no changes made on this one, but they definitely don't, they're not no. the same. Um, I mean, I'm happy with leaving it the way that it is presented in front of us at, on the screen that Sue's sharing. Yeah. They're, they're the same same but different but they're still different in how things are stated so I think I'm fine with leaving that if Jacqueline is in um Dee and moving on to Rita Burke but it's definitely different from what I have hard copy versus what's on the screen um, so for Rita Burke we can look at the change there yeah, I mean, mainly that she learned of um, that her signature wasn't certified um, because one of she was one of several petitioners that had requested information. So I think that's important to amend. All right. So, Sue, would you add that in for Rita Burke? So, yeah, so currently we. Okay. Her signature was not certified as a member of the petitioner. Um, what so parts? I, right. So I, I, I scratched that out. And how I amended it is that her signature was not certified, period. She learned of this only because she was one of several petitioners who requested information, period. Taking out as a member of the petitioner. Okay. 
Oops. Okay. There. Okay. So where are we going to put this in? Right yeah. after that? So the line should be, so after Ben and Amherst since 1970 was a 10-year member of town meeting. Her signature was not certified, period. Mm -hmm. And then add the sentence, she learned of this only because she was yep. one of several petitioners who requested information, period. And then um, let's see, where are we? Yep, that's it. So um, Carol Gray, I think it's particularly important. Need, yeah, do we need the David Lifkow with do his comment part of it? Does it matter because he's got a comment down below or is it really just, I mean, it's just an extra line, but if we're going through and changing things up, does it have to? No, I think, he, if I remember correctly, he just participated, he was going to say something and he didn't. And then I think later right. on in the, the meeting, he said something. Yeah, exactly, he's further down. So I don't know if that needs to actually be there. Not really. Yeah, At least in my opinion, it doesn't. Flat. You want to take it out? Yeah, I would just. It's gone. <laughs> okay. All right, now we're down to Carol Gray, CJG. So because this is the um, person that has filed open meeting law complaint, um, I think it's important to try to capture as much wordy or not of um, what, you know, to try to summarize what they were saying. My edit on that, and of course it's up to you all, um, one, two, three, four, it, within the four sentences into Carol Gray's comments under voter suppression, not saying it was intended that way, I struck out it wasn't intentional, but that was the effect. And then uh, let's see, six lines in, spoke to the Secretary of State's office and asked if missing an apartment was grounds for disqualification, period. And then she continued, they said, no, usually that's not the case if the signature matches what's on the voter registration forms and the address is clear. It doesn't matter that they're missing the apartment number and yet more than 24 were rejected for missing apartment numbers. So those are the main edits. There were some smaller ones, but those were the, the main edits to Carol Gray's comments. So when, when she made her comments, I'm trying to, obviously there's been a lot of comments since that, and I sure didn't go back and so, but did she say she believed it wasn't intentional or did she say it wasn't intended that way? So I think if we're trying to take people's words, what did she, Day. Yeah, she said it was not intended that way. Not and that's why it's different. So it was written as it wasn't intentional. Okay. But if she no, had no. said it wasn't intended that way, then I would say that to be the way it's presented. I think they mean the same thing purpose um personally, but either way with me is fine because they mean the same thing. Doesn't matter to me either. This writing style. I exactly. You know, I went back and listened to all the videos, and that's how that's what I came up with. That's what I heard. Um, okay. It was. Either way, it's fine. Yeah, either way, it's fine. All right. So I say then just leave that to okay. Have right. and then do you want to add in um, these other suggestions? Um, 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where that's going. Let's see. Um, let's see here. Does that look correct? Here we go. Okay. That look right, ladies? Yeah, it's fine. I think it looks good. So on to Daniel Denton Thompson. Um. So I do feel his comments were important. Um, he's making, um, of course, uh, a statement about why this, why this issue um, should rise to the level of uh, importance concerning voting rights. So lived, so it, it reads, lived in Amherst all his life, signed it with his original signature. His signature was rejected. Um, and it shouldn't read due to the fact that he didn't live at the address. Oh, it doesn't say that, D. Look at the what's on the screen. Where? Oh, okay, that was taken it's, out. Okay, yeah, yeah. In the hard copy, that's where it is. Okay, so here, you know, whether we want to include my uh, revisions as as I wrote them, but um, I surmised he found it weird or strange um, that uh, he didn't live at this address where he's lived for almost fourteen years with his with his mother. Um, who, of course, was a, a, a SNCC and voting rights activist. Um, he says mom was, a, was surprised too because she signed the same petition and her signature wasn't rejected. Um, and that she was a freedom writer. She fought for voting rights. So um, again, those are my revisions because that was the main part of uh, why he spoke up, I believe. All right. Um, I thought just if you want to add that, D, I think, I mean, uh, Sue, I'm sorry that uh, it's just going along with how we've been doing it. Well, let's see. I've got it's a little redundant. So, um, figure out how to merge them. Let's see. So let's see. I see what you mean too with it being kind of redundant. So we could try to once it's up there, maybe read it as amended there and then further revise it just so it's kind of not as just saying this one thing twice. Already, yeah. So, so yeah, I think just saying that uh, he's lived at his address for uh, 14 years with his mom and that his mom was uh, surprised because she signed the same petition and her signature wasn't rejected and she was a freedom writer and she fought for voting rights. So I don't think you need to put found it very weird saying that, you know. Yeah, we don't need to put that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that he simply, he's lived at the, at the same address with his mom for 14 years. Okay. I'm going to put that Hold on one sec. 
So not all is life. How's that? How's that read? No, wait, so fourteen years, and that she and and that she also signed the uh, petition. Is that there? Oh, I that's see. On the next line. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that her signature wasn't rejected. She's a freedom. Fight. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. So now on to um, Thomas and uh, Actually, Marla, I guess is the name. Yeah, Jamate. Yeah. yeah. So the only, the, you know, um, whether we want to agree to that, it doesn't necessarily have to be, but that um, they stated um, the voices of the elders in the community who wanted to sign this petition and express an opinion that it negates by, again, you know, disqualifying these signatures, that it negates um, their signatures and, and their participation. What's the difference between that and, and as far as in, in the mom signing the petition? So if you're gonna do it for one, you do it for the other one. Sure. If you're gonna do it that way, you don't half step. Sure. And cherry pick. I'm with you on that. Let's put it all. Is that one all set? Right, so we're, we're good with that. Um, yeah. As it's presented there, we'll move to this. Adrian. Okay, Adrian. So, you know, again, I think it's important that uh, Adrian uh, Terezi is saying that, um, which she echoed today, she wasn't involved in the voter petition. I, I think having that stated, um, you know, on record is important. Um, and then for her, it's about voters' rights, the rights of the citizen to petition their government. The board is a local independent body. Um, and then she's coming, the board this morning should engage and review, the, and review the process as well as examine the original petition signatures, the signed affidavits this morning or a work of democracy at its best. So I don't know if she said, believes the signatures on the petition should be compared to those now. I, I'd have to look again at that, but I think that sums up where she, what she said within that comment. Um, okay with how with the changes that were made for Adrian, but I'm not sure how to react. So this change here, I'm seeing the board is a local independent body, but that's not what we heard. We heard that um, the League of Women Voters, which is a local independent body. So that's two separate, that's two different statements. That she said today or then? No, this, this meeting that we're talking about here. Oh, on May 7th? Oh, May okay, 7th. I must have heard that wrong, yeah. Yep. You're right. So that's, I, that's the only discrepancy that I see here. Okay. Um, again, she believes signature should be compared to those on the affidavits. I mean, we put down what we heard. Okay. Um, so what you're adding, I've added not involved. Okay. Um, and, oops, where's my mouse? Where'd my mouse go? 
I'm kind of putting yours in between the other ones. Um, for her, it's all about voters' rights. Then okay, and then How does that look? Yeah, I think, you know, in saying you don't even need that last line, she believes that the signatures on the petition should be compared to those in affidavits. She's Actually, kind of saying that. Yeah, you're right. Okay, set that out. On. All right, so if that looks good, we should go down to um, Hilda had, I don't think, did you make any changes to Hilda? No, just Lithgow. Yep, so now it's David Lithgow. So I think the main points, and again, it's, it's up to you all, um, was that he changed his mind back and forth so many times actually about that maybe need some clarification um, about to support it, to support um, the revisiting the signatures or not. But I forgot how, we'd have to probably listen again to, to find out how he actually said that. But I do remember he talked about that. Let's see. He supports the town council democracy. Um, and then my revision was that was going to urge the board of registrars just follow the law, not revisit the certification process on the assumption that the certification process was conducted properly. Uh, listen to all of the people who zoomed in to speak to their affidavits and to testify the fact that the that they voted for the petition and that they signed the petition um, and believes that they have the right to that opinion and that it should be honored found their testimony quite persuasive. It's changed his mind and urges the board to revisit it. I mean, mainly that he has, he was going to speak, you know, on behalf of not supporting revisiting the signatures, but, but then he changed his mind and he urges the board to revisit it. So let's see, I guess that kind of speaks to that. So we don't have to necessarily change it. It's up to you all. Oh, I think it's our last one. We've added everything else to everybody else that I'm fine with it going in there. But again, that's just my okay. opinion. It's up to y'all. Okay. So here's where I added a lot. Um, you ladies probably haven't had a chance to read this yet. So under the discussion, point number four, from the very first time you saw the minutes.
Yes, and this. So I just I want to add there real quick about uh, my comments. Raise the question whether Attorney Goldberg had a conflict of interest due to represent, representation of the town manager and the town council. Um, just for good measure, of course, um, it, and is why KP Law is at our meetings. Um, had a conflict in advising the Board of Registrars as an independent body is what I said and was the case I was making and that attorney Goldberg was representing the town clerk, not the Board of Registrars. So add as an independent body after the first sentence. Would that do it? Yes, Attorney Goldberg had uh, a conflict in advising the Board of Registrars as an independent body, and that uh, Goldberg was representing the town clerk, not the Board of Registrars. Hold on. I don't know how, with some of that stuff, those, if she, I mean, is acting for us and not necessarily just the town clerk if we just need I know, but it's okay. what it's what I, I said and it's so you wanted to read so you've raised the question of whether Goldberg has a conflict of interest in representing the board of registrars. So we should add that there. Right, as an independent body. But the thing it is, is like, as far as like, if you're sticking true to what was said and not what you're thinking now. Oh, yeah. Uh, nope, I believe okay, that's, that's what, what I, I just said. want to make sure, because again, yeah. it's, you, you know, uh -huh. people have a revisionist view of what they say sometimes. And I oh, just want to make sure that this is not a revisionist view. Yes, very familiar with revisionism. <laughs> okay, take a look at that, see if that's correct now. Okay. Okay, so again, due to her representation, you're you're welcome to keep town manager and town council, but uh, also town clerk within okay. there. Okay, let's add that. Yeah. Okay, Katie will be able to help you to fund that. So the only thing I would add to attorney Goldberg's um, comments in summation is, and just because it was such a memorable line, um, attorney Goldberg said the open meeting law issue is a red herring. I don't think that we should leave it, put that in there. Just uh, did, did she say that during she the post that. meeting? She said that. In she the may, but, but again, to me, it's like insulting comments, just leave them That's out. That's not insulting, that was her line. It wasn't my I line. Understand that. I understand it was her that. line. And this, and this is my opinion. So it was not meant, my opinion, I just don't think, I don't. It was it meant to it. distract from whatever, because the red herring was, was I know, I know, I know what it means, thank you very much. Oh no, I was I was posing a revision, Jackie. Okay. All right. Okay. Um the only other thing was that I did and I don't see, let's see, was that reflected in there? Um I then asked for um if the board would be able to have independent legal counsel, independent legal guidance 
um, in this matter about the open meeting law. And yeah, I'm still, you know, it's, it's, that hasn't been answered. Sue, you actually replied that you'd look into that. And I didn't, correct. And, and then I replied still, that I did not. And I'll tell you, yeah. We um, still don't have an answer on that. That's something you're more than welcome to pose to the town manager who is your appointing authority. You have every right, absolutely. every right to ask him on your own. You don't absolutely. need me to do that. So absolutely. Yeah. So I just want it reflected. Yeah, I'm just looking to see. So that's right before we get to the motion that I'm I go. made. Yep. Okay. I'm just looking. That'll be the next. Oops, why does it do that? This one, let me see. Oh, we were. I think it's in the May 10th minutes that um, that's reflected that I did not check into that because it was asked again. I know I typed it in there somewhere. I think that's where yep. it is. Yeah. So just the, the, that anyway. day, you, yeah, you had just replied yep. that you'd look into it. Okay. Yep. That's fine. So then that's after fine. the motion, let's see. Oh, yeah, this shouldn't go there. Let's see. Right, there's several. So number five should be taken out there, I think. Wait. It's one of the agenda items, but it can go. Um... Oh, OK, I see what it's... you did. So motion, Dimitri Shabazz moved to adjourn the meeting, postpone all discussions. And then I made another motion move that the board proceed on Monday with the discussion of open meeting law. Yeah. Actually, what should go under the any other topics that may come before the board is just a none. That way we cover that. Oh, in the, the you know, OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK. So then under that, um, we didn't adjourn, and I move that the board proceed on Monday with the discu discussion of the open meeting law. Sue agreed that the motion on the table was for everybody to postpone this meeting today to a later date and time to be specified or specific. So that's before Sue Audet moved and seconded by Jamie Wagner. So I'd made another motion. Oh, let's see. So let's put this right here. Back, back, back. I hate, I hate word. <laughs> All right, let's go here. <laughs> it doesn't do what it wants. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. I'm a word perfect girl. I hear you. I was sad when we converted over. <laughs> oh, you too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, look, it's still not letting me. I think I have to just move the margin. Being dumb. Okay, there we go. All right. Force it to work. Okay. Okay, right. and then Sue, yeah, Sue, Adet, okay. Seconded. So under that motion, Sue Adet moved, seconded by Jamie Wagner to adjourn today's meeting um, until May 13th, 2021 at 
10 a.m. But oh well, that was mine. Just, just being more specific. Uh, that's just go along with the other motions. There wasn't really two motions, right? It should just be the same motion. So the two that moved second and by Jamie Wagner should go under the D Shabazz moves the board proceed on Monday. Because it doesn't really have I guess I'm also should just be together the same thing or I think I did make that motion though. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm. I know right. there are motions flying right, left, and sideways. We're trying to get oh, our feet okay. figuring out how who does what. I mean, yeah. the bottom line is we so voted. For, the one for D's motion, mm -hmm. D Shabazz moves at the board on Monday. So should well, should that have something specific to say whether it was seconded or vote like how it was voted on? Typically, right. I think you have the motion, it has to have it resolved at the end. Right. And that, that works. Motion failed. Okay, I think that makes sense. This comma here. Motion failed, motion failed, motion failed. Okay. Clarification, new motion, a vote, adjourn. There we go. So the last part there. Yeah, only the vote that took place unanimously in favor of the motion adjourned at 12 p.m. May 7th. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, okay, I see. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, it was confusing before. Yeah. Because there, there were, yeah. All right. So I move to um, accept the minutes and approve them as amended I second. All right, so Jacqueline Gardner has voted. Yeah, I'm in favor of it. We can accept them. Right. Sue Audette. In favor. D. Shabazz. Yes, in favor. And Jamie Wagner, yes. So these minutes are now approved and we place on file at the town clerk's office. Um, so we want to take time to review the May 10th minutes while to um, finish this up with these with these and save them and get them. Yep. Okay, let's see who is that. Okay. Does everybody see the May town? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, that's where it says it, D. Uh-huh, I see it. Yep. Okay. 
I got better at editing as we went forward. Um, this one here is reflecting the original ones that you, that were posted online that you guys got, and I'm lining through and underlining what was priorly there and what is being added. Okay, that makes sense. I think if there's no nothing in section one that we really are going to discuss, um, can you scroll up a little bit more just so we I can see some of like the uh, yeah probably if that everybody's okay with that just like and kind of do a little further down. And Sue, did you send these to us? I didn't. Oh. I did it. So um, I sent them like a little while ago, but that I, you haven't had a chance to look at. It. That's why I'm putting them on the screen for you to look I at. I know. I just I'd yep. be able to go through your edits a lot quicker because yeah. yeah, I agree. Jamie's like no, I apologize. They got done so late. It just yeah no. Let me know when you want me to scroll up. I think I'm okay with scrolling up. I'm not sure. Yep, please I do. First, I think we're coming to our first change okay. that D is suggesting. I've been okay with everything I've read that you've edited so far. So, um, so now we're at the under John Boniface. Um, looks like that's where two. Okay. Strike some stuff and then you mm -hmm. edit it. Yeah. So. So again, it just comes down to I try to be succinct and um, D D said more. So. Right. So, uh, you know the KP law. Yeah, my addition was that KP law stated that if the board of registers found that the open meeting law violations occurred then they would not have the power to declare the board's actions on April 21st null and void um, and said that the statement by KP law was false. This is again, John Boniface. There's no basis in law to support the statement. He had a conversation with the division of open government. Is that reflected in there? 
Yeah, I don't see that. He said he said it cannot only be remedied in court. Um, yeah, but that John Boniface said he went to the Division of Open Government of the Attorney General's mm -hmm. office. Yep, no, um, that's not here. Yeah, so I think that needs to because that has to do with um, you know uh, where um, this particular council has sought. Uh, some type of direction and information. And I think that's important to add into the minutes. So I believe his letter had also addressed this. Yeah, because then there's this what Greg attorney Greg Carball is is saying, then doesn't have a referent unless we um, sum up what attorney John Boniface has um, had said. So anyway, I made several revisions um, that were sent to you all, including the pre-meeting coaching um, for Friday's meeting. I feel that should not go in the minutes as it's not part of the Board of Registrar's meeting. But it's right. part of, it's part of uh, Attorney Boniface's comments. I'm good with all the other comments. I don't think that starting from like I said, there was a pre-meeting coaching and ending it to the with only two or four members present on April 21st. I don't I don't believe any of that needs to go in. Okay, well, it's public information now, but um, so he's commenting on what is public information. Um, he also says uh, there was no quorum of the board's April 21st meeting because the town clerk was on vacation. Um, I was not present. D. Shabazz was not present because doctor's appointment Amber Martin was not assigned to be interim town clerk that day. So she did not have the power to sit on the town, uh, uh, basically be the town clerk in the town clerk's shoes with only two or four members present April 21st. There was no quorum under Massachusetts law. So I do think that's important uh, from, again, it's uh, attorney Boniface's uh, uh, analysis, but um, that there was no quorum under Massachusetts law. Those are his comments. That one I, I can agree to putting in there because below that it states that attorney Corbo um, said that Amber Martin does stand in the shoes of the town clerk. Um, you know, all legal standards. Okay, so if we can, so that makes sense to have that there. Okay, so if we conclude in that paragraph, uh, Boniface said that there was no quorum at the board's April 21st, just that paragraph, because it is referring to something, of course, Attorney Carball had stated. 
got here. Oh, I got some on here also. Hey, I would agree with that. That's presented that way. Hold on, ladies. I just. Um, Lost one of your sets of revisions, D, to cut and paste from. Hold on. I'll be happy to send it. Oh, no, I've got it here. Just for okay. some reason, it's not on my screen. But I'm going to put it back. There we go. Okay. All right. So where am I cutting and pasting? What are, you, what are the, what are we in consensus on? <laughs> okay. So Good. I haven't heard from the everybody. Are we adding from the very beginning at the first, with the first paragraph and then the last paragraph? So um, I wanted to add that um, it said that the KP law uh, stated that the Board of Registers found that the open meeting law violations occurred, then they would not have the power to declare the board's actions on April 21st. Null and void. He said that by um, the statement by KP law was false, was inaccurate. There's no basis in law to support that statement. He had a conversation with the Division of Open Government of the Attorney General's Office staff confirming that that is not accurate. Uh, and attorney Boniface said that false advice highlights uh, his second point, which you don't have to put that, but he states, um, and then that's when it, you have there, he states that there's direct conflict of interest um, in having Ms. Goldberg or any other attorney from KP Law advising the Board of Registrars. Uh, the interests of the town clerk, town council, and town manager are averse to the petitioners and the board should be independent. So that's the first part. And since you all object to putting in about the pre-meeting coaching, um, the last paragraph that I include is um, attorney Boniface said there, there was no quorum at the board's April 21st meeting because the town clerk was on vacation. Um, D. Shabazz is not present because of a doctor's appointment and Amber Martin was not assigned to be interim town clerk that day. So she did not have the power to sit in the town clerk's shoes. With only two of four members present on April 21st, there was no quorum under Massachusetts law. I think there was a quorum on that day because Amber was filling in on Sue's shoes. The only thing is, is um, in the record, it doesn't show that um, Amber voted. So yeah, I got you, that. but these are, said, these on, are simply on, attorney please. Boniface's Yeah, I know, statements. I know, I know, but I'm just saying, hold on, please. You know, I'm just clarifying as far as like what the, okay. what the situation is. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I've cut and paste the first and the second pair or the last paragraphs of changes. Yeah. So let me scroll up. There we go. I'm okay with those moments.
and D didn't have any real any edits for the Greg Corvo section. I have no problems with what to has it. Okay, I'll scroll up a little. So um, under attorney Carol Grace comments. So the main, to me, the main part of that is the, and you can decide whether to put the second paragraph revision, but the first paragraph revision, I think um, is important um, after, let's see. Oh, it's changed here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what, what I don't see uh, included here is the discussion about deliberation and um, the delegation of authority not being uh, fully understood. Um, those were part of her comments and I, I think those are important edits to make. So the paragraph that I included, agenda discuss delegation of authority under charter sections 8.2, three and four, no member of the public would know what that's talking about, her comments. Second violation is that you're not allowed to send out emails about the topic to be discussed in advance that violated deliberation component of the open meeting law. Um, and then of course, says read division of open government language about what is considered deliberation. Email before April 21st meeting that explained everything was deliberation. And again, these are her comments, not ours, but they're, they're different. So I hope I'd be a part. I've already put them in there, so let me know. So I personally don't think that this. I'm fine with the agenda discussed delegation of authority under charter section. No member of the public would know that what that's talking about. So that's her opinion. That's in there. But the second violation is that you're not allowed to send out emails. So she's assuming that emails are sent there was discussion and deliberation. Now, for me, looking at that, somebody who's reading this that didn't hear other comments at the meeting, there was no email sent that would, I believe, been considered deliberation. So I think that somebody reading this could say, well, the, the board of registers, look, it's in there. They must have done that. It, it says right there it was a violation. But that didn't happen. So I don't agree that that part should be in there, the second violation um, down through um, the rest of that from that down. I don't agree that that should be in there because it could give somebody the wrong um, impression about that was her opinion but it doesn't clarify that that wasn't actually, you know, there was, that didn't happen. Okay, for me though, even though I disagree with it, it does say Carol believes at the beginning. So I'm assuming everything underneath that, that's just her opinion that they talk about it as opposed to the facts and the truth. I can agree with that, Jackie. I just, hmm? I don't know. I, just, I don't I know. I'm sorry, did you say you can or cannot? Oh. I agree with you oh. saying that underneath okay. it being, you know, her opinion. I just feel like sometimes yeah, I know. <laughs> people will not go back to that and not remember that that was stated up there. Mm -hmm. So unless there's another way that it can be like, you know, at the end of it, that this is, again, oh. her opinions and there is no Okay, fact. but maybe, but maybe additionally somewhere add Again, that Carol Green believes a second time to make yeah, it clear. I, I'm okay um, with that. I just, I, there was no, you know, yeah. somebody could just hit, take out that the second violation was that. Um, mm -hmm. And then only, only mm -hmm. remember that. So I'm, I'm okay if we can add the, another, her opinion or yeah. Right, yeah. her but, opinion also, something like that, so that right. you, it gets a little clarification. Right. Um, 
you have her opinion that about better? the violation. Yes. Is that you're not allowed to send out emails and you're not I allowed think to that's that. a little better, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that way, I, I think that reads a little bit meta. Can I scroll? Right. Yeah, and then D had some changes. I'm not seeing, I think it's still under Carol's section where the board can redo the April 21st meeting, yeah. can do what attorney general can do, notification of prior meeting. Is that, was that somewhere that was in, oh, it just got separated online. Okay, sorry, scratch that. And yes, I'm good to scroll down now, public comment. Make this a little easier to read. Is that better? I like the larger print myself. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> we just keep improving as we go here. Okay. Right. <laughs> All right. So unless Jackie has something to amend to their um, comments, yeah, scroll up. Thank you so much. So well, yeah, but that's okay. Well, just leave it as is. It's what I said. It's it's pretty much what I said. But I wish I had just ex um, expanded a little bit more. But hey, it is what it is. So Sarah McKee, um, you know, again, in trying to condense what's there. Um, I think the recommendation. Uh, of nullification of the vote um, taken immediately following deliberation. You know, you don't have to use my words, but that's basically what, what they were talking about. You do reference that um, they're they want us to seek guidance from the AG's office, but they also suggest um, nullification of the vote taken on the 21st, I guess is what's implied there. But on the flip side, if you say that, then you, to me is a, is a, shall we say a healthy balance on that would have been, well, something else, I don't really wanna go into that either as far as, um, but that's, that to me should be balanced. I'm sorry, what? As far as like, okay, the nullification that you're talking about, there was nothing wrong with the meeting. It's just that there wasn't a quorum present or- Okay, no, I'm talking yeah. about what Sarah McKee, I mean, I, I have something longer than that, but I'm just mm -hmm. trying to get at, you know, what is different in what Sarah McKee is saying within her statements to- Okay, yeah. Press. Okay. <laughs> What's gotcha. going on? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, got you, but I thought you talked about the nullification of the meeting. Well, she and says that. that. So she says, yeah. Yeah. So she yeah. says she's, you know, um, I think we have that. She's been a uh, part of the bar for 40 years, references the AG case that. on the open meeting law. Uh, and she, she references a particular case, the Dudley Planning Board. Okay, for deliberation exactly. and AG's office recommended imposing an order for nullification of the vote taken immediately following the proper deliberation, request okay. town's guidance from the AG's office in order to rectify what's clearly a gross violation of voters' rights on this matter. Okay. So, but the point I'm making is it's about the quorum. And also she didn't mention anything about the content of the meeting. Because again, to me, people getting the voters petition, people thought that that was the place 
where if where they would have gotten permission to to um, redo stuff. Okay, I'm just trying to sum up. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying to me that's kind of like the the, the um, you know the side bar comments on that one or the side off to the side comments, but it's, it wasn't in the meeting. I have to agree with that. So, sort of. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Nope. Those were those were my revisions. So it's just up to you all. Okay. Uh, Oh, no, it can, it can, it can go in, it can go in. But I just would have liked to have seen a little more, shall we say beef on that, but it's not, the beef isn't there. Is that enough? Yeah. And then on Nancy Sardison, I think that line, that first line should read for accuracy, spent half of her life as a voting rights lawyer. There's not a voter lawyer, a voting rights lawyer. Oh. Yeah. for the department, for the DOJ. You could just abbreviate it. Yeah. Um, so. Well, what's the spotty nine, is that? Oh, okay. That's our address. Yeah. Okay, okay. I got a little bit did not use, because it says 49 Jinx did not use street. Oh, yeah. yeah. Doesn't Sorry. make any sense. Yeah. So that should, I guess, to sum it up, disqualifying Barbara Elkins, who used the abbreviation LN rather than writing out Lane, um, and then 49 Jinx, because um, we didn't use, I don't know. So I'd have to listen to it again. That's probably an error on my part. Yeah, and, that, and, our, and the one we've got up on the screen says, did not use street, did not use apartment numbers. Okay. All right, so um, I think, wait, where is she? Did we put in that, um, she's not, let's see, those Jim Crow, okay, because she starts talking about voting rights and that's what she looked at when she's part of the DOJ. Um, she says she's not here about the library, which is a political issue. Um, says she's here about it being a constitutional issue. And that's what she was referring to disqualifying Barbara Elkins, um, who was one of the signees. It's a constitutional issue. It's a voting rights issue. And she goes on, so Barbara Elkins, um, and then uh, Lucas, another signee, put zip code in the address. I think you have that. And signed substantially as registered. It's clear that the discretion was abused and the affidavits state that. So um, it's again, whether you all wanna include that, but that looks like a, a summation. She actually had uh, details about some of the, the affidavits and the signatures. So I'm fine with you adding that stuff too. If everybody. So from not hear about library, a political issue, and this is a constitutional issue, and all the way up to the word 49. Yeah. Okay. 
right here. Okay, are we on to, are you, but yeah, yeah, I think that's fine for uh, Sardis, and are we on to Jasna, Reggie, yeah. okay, um, I'm also okay with the edits from Jasna, from D. Yeah, it's just the only thing that she, um, she was a, uh, she collected signatures. I don't know if that needs to be, I think that's fine what you have there, except she also collected signatures. Yeah. Um, I had more on, on Jasna about the 200 of the nearly, um, 1100, uh, Amherst voters, one in five had their names thrown out, but, you know, again, that's been said elsewhere. Uh, Michael Serduk, are we on to there? Let's see. Yeah. All right. Um. Yes. So I think just that, to identify him, I added the attorney practicing for 40 years. Yeah, and I, I think that's fine what you have there. Unless someone else has something to add. I think that's good. So on to Maria Kopicki. Yeah. Um I'm okay. Um, okay at this point too with uh, these additions for Maria. Okay, great. Right. For Terry Johnson, any discussion? I think, yeah, I think that sums up. I mean, Terry obviously had 
things to say about, you know, transparency and democracy. Um, but um, you all are fine with it, fine with it. All right, so on to Peggy Matthews Nelson. Yeah. Um, I, you know, um, I don't know why that was taken out, but, um, you know, Peggy uh, did say something to the effect of it, it's unreasonable to require residents to go to court to correct the assistant town clerk's mistakes, whether you want to put you know, that or not, but it's unreasonable. That was part of their main point. And, um, Well, maybe if you threw in alleged, because I, I, she doesn't know for okay. sure what happened. So maybe um, if she alleges or something like that okay. in this particular case. Well, then we would be mis, misinterpreting or misquoting Peggy Matthews Nilsson. But uh, the I, main- not, not just saying she's alleging. Yeah, well, the main point actually is our, uh, it's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to require residents to go to court to correct the mistake. But you're saying that it's a mistake that you're correcting. You're alleging that it's a mistake. It hasn't um, been proven. Yeah. Again, Peggy's Peggy's thoughts and words, not mine. I, I understand that. I understand that. Because maybe even just unreasonable to, to require courts to go to court to correct the alleged town clerk mistakes. Because you're not giving her, giving her a direct quote anyway. It's a summary. Well, what Peggy believes to be a mistake. All right. Peggy believes it may be a mistake. I think um, we should leave Peggy's as it's corrected on the screen. I just added. Do you want me to take that out? The court part? Hold on, let me. Yep, take a look. But that's what it says here. Oh, wait a minute. It's unreasonable to require residents to go to court to correct the assistant town clerk's mistake. So that's her from her. Yeah, I think I'm fine with, with having the what she believes to be the assistant town clerk's mistakes. Like I'm just yeah. out there that that was her opinion, but it yeah, I'm fine with up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I'm okay with those as long as she uh, believes and not okay. stating it as fact. Um, so how many yards were you thinking? All right. So, so D, are you uh, fine with yeah, how it's presented on screen? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm on the, is it Elizabeth Gilbert? Okay, yep, Elizabeth Gilbert. Can Voted in every election since 1981. Signatures are indicative of identity and intent. The legal rule is unless a statute specifically prescribed a particular method of making a sign signature, it is legal. All signatures are expected to do is signal that you intend to adopt an agreement. So that's new. Um, and it's something, again, that this particular commenter uh, obviously wanted into public record. And I'm fine with these additions if other people are. You talk about Peggy Nelson? Elizabeth yes. Gilbert. Uh, oh, Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth Gilbert. Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let me go back. 
Okay, so I just added it mulling over a few other things. Sorry, a little bit behind. Okay. Well, bottom line is, you know, um, some boards and committees only put down, these are the people who comment, they don't even put down what their comments are. Mm -hmm. um, we had all this and we're, you know, it doesn't have to be a transcript. So we were trying to get the gist, but not have to have mm -hmm. verbatim. Mm -hmm. That's where we, that was our starting point. Okay. Oh, I'm okay with Elizabeth. Sorry about that. Yeah. Elizabeth and yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Sorry, a little slow here. It's late in the day, what can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Must have got up early today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I did. Well, we're all, we're almost through, so <laughs> be be uh, of good cheer. We're almost through. It's a blood right. miracle. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to scroll down to Molly Turner now? Oh, there, right there. Here we go. She's on top of the screen. I'm fine with Molly Turner. All right, so I'm good with it too. Jackie, are you up to date with that one yet? Uh, give me one more second, sorry. Just wanna reread it one more time. No, that's fine, that's fine. I'm good with that, I'm good with that. Okay, um, Anita Sorrow. Um, I think they're extensive, but I would just, I guess, um, suggest because it's so uh, sparse right there uh, in in relation to what she did say. Um, let's see that she was wrong. I mean, we don't have to say she's wrong about the charter, but that's in essence what she's saying. Um, All she feels, what she handling, feels. Handling of petition suggests charter was designed to exclude rather than include, um, and no desire to give serious consideration to the petition or to adhere to legal processes unless they serve the desired goals of those in power. And I think I wrote is a lawyer, so that should be as a lawyer uh, who represented large influential nonprofit corporations, because I know her, that's what she, I think that's what she was saying. I'd have to again, go back and see verbatim, but she urges the board to examine the law and consider obligations it imposes to serve, not the town manager, the town council, but the people of this town. Um, so I think that's the main gist of what she's saying there. We don't have to put it all, but I think some of it should represent her, her words. Well, personally, I like the shots <laughs> myself, but that's me. I'm okay with what she added, but that's just me. Yeah, it doesn't really, to me it doesn't really matter, but. Pull down second driveway, dump next to compost. So I'm going to take out feels the charter is being used to benefit the town council because it's stated in a different way below. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this too, because it says that too. Okay. Just again, it's just more. more expounding. Okay. Yeah. 
So then we had Carol Gray and Krista rising. I know Krista had submitted through the chat section, which I, I noticed we don't have chat right no. now. No. Um, yeah, so then Carol Gray um, had submitted that um, Barry Brooks, resident Barry Brooks was disqualified for an S, which is, um, which is his signature that was completely legible. A couple signers were disqualified for addresses because they wrote out their street cross brook through the voter rolls. Um, Maude Beeching Lowe wrote her address clearly. So I, I just feel that since that's part of, um, you know, again, public record of who these folks are, um, it would be important to include Carol Gray's, uh, the summation of Carol Gray's comments. And that spoke to the disqualified signatures doesn't really capture. Yeah, but, does, but hasn't she several times have so, talked about that cross book address? Uh, but there's other people. Yeah, here I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So the way I see it, in my opinion, she's already spoken enough of it and spoke to the disqualified signatures is adequate in my opinion. But again, she didn't speak to these people. So for them- No, no I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I understand, but it's, it's been in other, other, other sections and other places. So she's gotten a point across. That was my feeling and that's Again, for, kind of right but into public record these particular folks is it, this uh, stuff is public record. it is public record with these comments in this meeting the comments in this meeting are public record that's what i'm saying so we need to write it in for carol gray well if you want to write it in for carol gray write it in but the way i see it is in other things that that she's you know written so but if you want to write it in write it in Maybe it's adequate. Oh, where'd Jamie go? Hold on. Jamie's not there. Let's wait for Jamie to come back. Mm -hmm. But it's showing Jamie. I'm oh, still. There she is. Say. Oh, your mic, you're muted. Okay, we're back. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, Everything okay? Yeah, I think that I think that we might just. I mean, we've. I have no problem with adding the Carol Gray and the Krista Rising stuff. I just don't know how. Um, you know, when you're putting people's names and addresses in there, and it wasn't them. It you know somebody else made a comment. Is it okay to to have that? kind of information. I mean, it's out there already, it's, but like, right. it's public. Is that okay? It is. I'm okay with both Carol and Krista's Hi, addition on there. So what are you, okay. Sorry, yeah, give me two seconds. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, is everyone else good with what she, um, Sue just added so we can go skip to the section four yes. review of the oh, meeting law? I don't like that red comments and then comment red. Oh, okay, hold on. Yes. I, just, I just want to do a quick okay. say. Sure. I'm getting kind of far into this. Okay. Oh, forbid I should lose this. <laughs> okay. Um, so you got read comments by yes. Krista and then comments read pick a lane. How's that? How's that? <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, and actually comment. Uh, let's just. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's good. That's good.
so let's see. So later on, are the motions included in this, or is this all discussion that you have reflected here, Sue? Under oh, this four. is the discussion. Yeah, no, no, there's all your motions. So okay. this is all the discussion before the motions. Okay. So if you, can you make the, any bit like so we can see more of it or that's pretty much all we get um let's see here if not it's fine it just can i you read that though it's no no so yeah that's the problem with this all right I? then the way it was was fine i just was trying to get more for Actually, let's try something else. Oh, oh no. Whoops. <laughs> Don't get sick now. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's probably worse because it's bigger. That is that readable? That's okay. Okay. By the way, we're able to go into our own view options and enlarge. I don't know if y'all know that. Sean, are you still here? Yes. Yes, maybe um, if, if some of the ladies would like to try to enlarge their screen, you can tell them how to do that. Oh, I'm good on it. You're good on it? I think that that, that was applicable a little bit applicable to me, but I got my glasses on, but it's just oh, okay. that, that can be better without them. <laughs> okay. Thanks anyway, Sean. <laughs> yeah. So I've got down through um, onto like the next page where D Shabazz wants the board to be transparent like that. I'm okay with everything that has been added from there up. Um, Everybody else? If everybody else is good. Yep. Okay. Oh, let me just backtrack on this. You're saying you want that out? Is it in or out? No, I was good with it in. I was just kind of thinking so she could scroll up some more and we could go on to more. I was okay with everything that had been added. Oh, okay, okay. Before. I thought you all had already gone down the bottom. Okay, I got you. Okay. okay. And Jackie, you're looking at the one on your, your hard copy, but you want to make sure you're looking at the one on the screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. actually, I have my, my uh, right here. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm good. A multimedia, some's in hard, some's on the tablet. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> Stuff everywhere here. <laughs> Actually, my printer died, that's why. <laughs> I couldn't print it out. <clears throat> So oh, I'm, I'm kind of up to date with everything um, from right above the first motion. I kind of stopped there because I feel like we'll probably start discussing more stuff mm -hmm. there, but I'm okay with everything before that first motion. Um, the only thing I'm, I don't know if it should go there somewhere else, but like we're starting to discuss like, um, 
like attorney Bonifaz's, you know, if he signed and that kind of stuff, if that should be, I'm fine with all of that, but whether it should be there or further down, I don't know what other people's opinions are. Actually, it's in the order in which it happened. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that makes it sense. Is. Yep. So is there, um, should we, is everybody okay to move down and start with the first motion? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, if you want to advance up. Everybody ready? You, can you scroll a little bit more so well, hold up i'm trying to figure out where we are on that so that's why i kind of try lost a little bit too as i was trying to figure out what was down below a so little bit further basically before every motion in the old set of minutes this is what we were missing was all the discussion before the motion okay okay so um so you'll see look for a vote two two and then mm -hmm. before the next motion that's all your talk and then the next motion would be 
So this is the fourth motion at that point. Um, the bottom one, Demetria Shabazz moved, Jamie Wagner seconded it to have attorney. Yes. John, yes. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah, to I know at. it's, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And then he speaks, okay, here we go. Okay, I don't know for, let's see, for attorney Boniface uh, states that the meeting should be null and void as there was no delegation of authority. The very actions of the town clerk's office sought this delegation shows it wasn't implemented to begin with. And then there's an addendum here felt that the town charter did not override the open meeting law and that the board has the power to take action. Okay, uh -huh. so that was the addition. All right, just sounds right. Okay, so okay, I don't know if the which one came first. Um, was it to have John Boniface speak again? And yeah, but I'm just looking at mm -hmm. the previous notes on this, I guess it's now the fifth action. I mean, the fifth motion. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think you've made a couple of motions that didn't go through. And I think we took one out because it didn't happen. Um, oh, but it should still be part just, of public record. Yeah. Well, so that would be one, two, three, four there. This was the fifth motion is what I'm trying to understand. I know. I see, I see where you are. Yeah. And so it just reads differently than what was in the original minutes. And I'm trying to understand, does that make the same point in the motion and it looks uh, different. Well, the one the what you've got up on the screen is actually almost verbatim for what happened, looking at transcripts and listening to the meeting. Yeah. So um, but what the first set of minutes, I don't think it was exactly, I think it was so confusing that things got put in the wrong place. Okay. Because there were a lot of motions made and then they were half made. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're not going to put that in the minutes. Um, at least this reads, okay, here's okay. the motion. It passed. Then he spoke. Yep. And, yeah. Actually, to that point, it doesn't really say motion allowed or anything like that. Let me just, there's no real vote. Mm -mm. Um, so I think sometimes we just allowed it. It didn't get voted. That's the way I see it. And that's something probably need to tighten up in the future. Yeah. As yeah. far as like having a format that mm -hmm. we agreed upon and that we can use during the meetings. Because the way I see it, a lot of... You know, from the recollection, John was just giving them permission to talk as opposed to we voting on anything that he said. So I don't, in some respects, I don't, it's like a motion. Well, I, I don't know if it can Or you mean we voted on allowing him to speak? Uh, yeah. I, I believe we did. We actually, that's what I'm saying. Vote, we did take a vote on allowing him to speak. Right. And um, it just wasn't recorded. We'd probably have to go back into the recording 
to see that, but I believe we did. We were trying to adhere to Robert Rules of Order and, and mm -hmm. didn't take a vote. Mm -hmm. But this is where this, the format needs to be standardized if we're gonna do this in the future. You know, have yeah, like well, Robert Rules of Order, that's the yeah. format. Yeah. So we uh -huh. just need to adhere. But even still, but even still, when I've been looking at Robert Rules and mm -hmm. formats, they, they switch depending on the type of industry and different things that you're working with. But anyway. <laughs> To be discussed so, in the future. So shall we, do we want to put something after that? Do we want to say, um, Attorney John Boniface was allowed to speak? Mm -hmm. And that's yep. when he got moved in. That's when he got moved in second, as far as like what, him being allowed to speak a, a, a couple of times during that meeting. That's what we were doing. Because we've got the moved and we've got the second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the fourth motion there. And so then this fifth motion, um, let's see, that probably was the vote and it just got put into the, the motion again. We, mm -hmm. I have the transcript. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all do. I know, and I listened to it. It's just very confusing because things were half said and half and cut off. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think the gist of what happened though is the important thing. Who spoke mm -hmm. when? What did they say? Mm -hmm. Whether it was voted or not, it doesn't matter. It was allowed. It happened. Right. That's what I was just going to say. If there's like a, you know, there's obviously things that need to have a vote taken on them and that mm -hmm. needs to be on record. But certain things, there's probably like just a general consensus and maybe mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily warrant a vote. But obviously it was allowed because it goes on to in the next paragraph just right. what he said or whatever. So, but again, I think Jacqueline's right. We need to, I guess, kind of, I mean, to our, you know, benefit or our side or whatever, we, we don't typically have meetings like this. I mean, yeah. we've, uh -huh. this is all kind of new to all of us. Um, mm -hmm. yep. So I think having that meeting going forward in the open meeting law training, that will help us kind of, mm -hmm. if we are faced with this again, mm -hmm. know the, the proper yeah. way to handle yeah. things. Yeah, because also, you know, even the process, I know that the chair can allow him to speak, but, you know, just maybe again also figure out ways that that can be allowed and like whether or not they should have been given a time limit you know things like that is probably what we need to you know talk about too i'm gonna leave it alone <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> for now okay moving it up a little bit okay things for the future Yeah, I, I think within the time uh, code of an hour and 56 minutes, 51 seconds, that um, it looks like I made a motion to have attorney John Boniface uh, offer a different point of view in terms of legal counsel. Um, Sue said, is there a second? And there was, I don't hear a second, and then Jamie Wagner. Um, I'm going to second only because I'm sorry. I want to see, I guess, I want to hear another perspective also. Um, Where so is I, that? 
that's time code 156. No, no, no. Where is that here in the minutes? Where should oh, that be here in the minutes? Yeah, that's what that's what I'm trying to to get at. Was there a vote? Um, so we didn't. I, I think Jackie has a point. Um, so then Sue says, okay, then attorney, um, you'll have five minutes to speak. And um, Greg Carbo, Madam Chair, through you. Um, anyway, he cautions, as usual. And then, um, let's see. So is that? So he this begins motion? to speak. Yeah, so he begins to speak. And, and the thing is, we didn't take um, a vote on it. It was seconded by Jamie. And mm -hmm. I guess we're, you know, uh, assuming that, well, if it's seconded by um, another board of registrar, then if it would go to a vote, but we shouldn't make those assumptions, we need to have a roll call vote on these items. On every so, motion. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, but that's, yeah. but it's reflected in here then. So that's, yeah, that is, that's when he spoke. Okay. I just wanted to make okay. sure that was, that was accurate to, to Jackie's point. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So we're 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 on that fifth motion. Uh, the only thing I have to add later on in that have to do with my specific comments. Under that yep. last motion. They are pretty severely abbreviated. Mm -hmm. Oh, so after, so can I scroll up? This is after where Jane, the very last sentence of the next part. Um, it's not there. Let's see. So Jamie Wagner stated there's no violation of the open meeting law. Where's that? very last sentence on page six. Oh, i see and then yeah, yes six. so then i have okay then comments. your, your yeah. comments yeah okay so let me get yeah. your comments up and i would recommend you not put that in about uh, leaving the board i'm sorry i i said i wouldn't put that in there about you leaving the board well, it's just my frustration. It, it does reflect okay. accurately okay. my frustration. Hey, so. Your frustration, you want to express them? Go right ahead. Oh. Okay. So it would I, be nice someday to talk to you about some of the stuff that you had said in here. I found it quite interesting, but I didn't think that the, the appropriate time and place. So I'd like to talk to you someday about what I used to do when I was a kid. I, I have a whole black history project, love to talk with you about it. We can record <laughs> it, we can add it to the archives that are going no into archives. the library. No, no, well, no archives, no archives, me and you. It, it's what I do, professionally. I know, so, I know. Yep. I know. But normally I don't talk about myself, so feel privileged. <laughs> okay, yep, I, I love, I love the storytelling. You know, I think it, it uh, educates so many folks, love to do it. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying okay. I'd be averse to it, love to do it. Uh, okay, right. so okay. here's me now under, then Sue Adet stated that the board, let's see. Oh, okay, so then there's that discussion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was, yeah. So there's your stuff I plunked in there. Yeah, I appreciate okay. it. Okay. So what I think, Sue, is that that is where it has there at the bottom, Demetria Shabazz stated that she's going to leave this board as she yes. comes to the first. That's where my comments should appropriately go, I believe, in relation to. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yep. I'll take yeah. All right. Let's see here. All right, so we're here. So then that first line, um, so Demetria Shabazz 
Um, oh, yeah, we're repeating here. Let's see. Right. Let's see. So you could just re uh, Dimitri Shabazz uh, discussed about whether the notice requirement of the open meeting law was violated. Because, yeah, I repeat that later. So. Mm -hmm. Weather out. Okay. Yep. Yeah, right. Appreciate it. Oh my, are we at the end? Of this part of our meeting? Yes. No, I'm, I know. I'm saying of the minutes. Yes. The minutes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll make a motion to approve this set of minutes um, as amended and I second it. All right, so with a second, let's take a vote. So Jacqueline Gardner. I agree to adjourn. Oh, no adjourning, <laughs> we're just the minutes. Don't we'll go there yet. <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. He has to approve the minutes. Yes, that too. Oh, oh, right. um, Sue that? <laughs> yes. All right, D. Shabazz? Yes. And Jamie Wagner, yes. So these minutes are now approved and will be placed on file in the town clerk's office. Um, so now to the next part of our meeting is, um, is now continuing May 24th meeting to discuss the open meeting law complaint by Ms. Carol Gray dated May 14th, 2021. Um, discussion and vote to authorize the submission of the response, which is what was sent by KP Law that we should all have copies of. Um, so I don't know if we need time to review that or if people have reviewed so it. I, I make a motion that we not submit uh, KP Law's response until we have had time to discuss this in our executive, our scheduled executive session meeting. But which, um, to be honest, which, um, what's the date approximately for this KP law that you're talking about? Is that something that we got recently? No, it's the open meeting law complaint dated May 14th. Okay, May 14th. Attorney Corbo's email to us with their response was dated Friday, May 28th at 3.53 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when Attorney Corbo, I see still here, when would when does this have to be filed um, or when does the response have to go in to meet all the time constraints? Oh, there we go. Thank you through you, Madam Chair. Um, so you have 14 business days from receipt. So if you receive this on the 14th, um, one, two, June 4th is the deadline. Ooh. Mm. So, you know, I I still would restate my motion because I don't agree to submitting on our behalf as the Board of Registrars a letter from the attorney apparently representing the, the town of Amherst um, this letter if we ourselves have not discussed it since it involves litigation having to do with the board of registrars so is this this no. is separate from the lawsuit though so we the meeting the executive session that we were going to have the meeting on was in regards to the lawsuit so this is just the open meeting law violations i think those are still need to be two separate things yes um, definitely two separate things Yes, this is just our response to that complaint to the AG's office, mm -hmm. addressing each of the issues in that complaint. Right. Well, that's all this is. I still feel we should discuss it, but. Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so should we take a couple minutes, well, a few minutes and read up until um, the first discussion for section number one, the minutes of the board, that's the first complaint. And so we're familiarized with what's before that and then start with each complaint. 
Okay. Are you going to put it up on the screen, Sue, or? Oh, let me see. I shall try. Okay, let's see. Here. And I'm a little bit confused too. Is the letter that um, Greg Corbo um, responding to on the May 14th open meeting law complaint. Is that what we're getting at too? Yeah, that's I think that's what we're doing right now is that's what we're reviewing that um, okay. response and okay. approve it or not approve it to be sent. What, to approve his letter, right? Right. Okay. I think All that's right. typically, I if I've understood everything correctly, that's typically the kind of the chain of events that happens if there's a complaint it goes through the town attorney yeah yeah no no i, no, I get it i just want to make sure because again i don't want to like cross over into oh, you know, litigation. The, the, the um the, the litigation during this meeting that's why i want to make it perfectly clear as far as like exactly what we're doing with this this letter okay hold on i was still in the middle of saving the last set of minutes i hadn't even finished that okay all right, let's see here. And okay. Does everybody see? Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I propose a revision to uh, the third paragraph first sentence for the reason set forth below the board denies that there is a violation of the open meeting law with respect to the time frame in which it created and approved minutes from its meetings on April 21st, May 7th, May 10th, and that this portion of the complaint has been rendered moot by the approval of the minutes from those meetings during the board's duly noticed public meeting held on June 1st. Um, I could see a revision that um, there is uh, some merit to uh, the part of the complaint that states April 21st meeting minutes were not filed within three meetings or 30 days. Otherwise, that's inaccurate. And Attorney Carball on the uh, May 24th meeting admitted to that in, uh, that inaccuracy. Uh, Madam Chair, through you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, that is not inaccurate, nor is it what I quote unquote admitted to at any prior meeting. Um, if you scroll down to the discussion of that topic, what you will see is a quotation from the Attorney General's regulations. Yeah, stop right there. Um, so what it said, what the regulations specifically state are that 
a timely manner will generally be considered to be within the next three public body meetings or within 30 days, whichever is later, unless the public body can show good cause for further delay. And as I will explain further down below, um, it is my opinion that the board did in fact have good cause for the delay in not approving the minutes at its last meeting, which would have been within the time frame, because it was pointed out that those minutes did not accurately reflect what occurred at the meeting. And in my opinion, um, it is good cause to take additional time to ensure that the meeting minutes are accurate rather than approving something that may not be accurate. And so um, it's my position that there is no violation of the open meeting law regulations because there was in fact good cause um, for, for the short amount of further delay that occurred. Well, I don't, I don't agree, uh, but um, I guess we can vote on that because this is supposed to represent the board of registrars. So I just think you're backtracking at this point, Attorney Garbo, on um, saying that they were created but not approved and that the 30 day time limit, right, um, should be interpreted as, as the board approving draft minutes or at least having the board present it with the draft minutes, um, which didn't take place. So um, I, I don't, agree. I'm okay with it as long as there is that provision that it is within because I mean we, we there is that reasonable you know delay kind of clause that's in there and that applies to this and I'm okay with that being spelled out in the thing later on. No I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it too. So are you saying that it, the first, that third paragraph, first sentence should be revised to reflect this provision? I don't see anything wrong with that. So Attorney Carball, it sounds like we would like that third paragraph, first sentence revised. That's not what I heard. No. That's what I heard. It is not what I heard. And if that's the case, then there should be a vote to that effect. Okay, well, I, <laughs> so Madam Chair, you would have to decide that, not Attorney Carball. Okay, give me one second. I'm just reading a little bit more, hold on. All right, so I guess I'm gonna ask the board. So I agree with what attorney Corbo had said that if there is a provision that allows for time, you know, a reasonable delay, um, which he saw with our last, you know, the, the minutes didn't get approved at the last meeting, we needed to push it off. But, and if there is a provision that allows for that to happen, then I'm okay with how he has it stated originally in this. I don't know if that um, going forward to who we're submitting this to, but that needs to be put in the minutes in this letter, excuse me, not minutes, I'm so stuck on minutes right now. If it needs to be put into this letter, but as long as that provision is whoever is getting this letter knows that provision or knows that I don't know that if it, it needs to be changed at all. This is the attorney. Important. So Jamie, just to be specific, this is the attorney general uh, for the state of Massachusetts that's that's getting this letter and that has received um, the original complaint from Carol Gray. Um, so, you know, it's a it's the highest uh, uh, legal uh, office within the state of Massachusetts, that's who's getting this letter. And so what is stated 
on paragraph three first sentence for the reason set forth below the board denies that there is a violation of the open meeting law with respect to the time frame in which it created and approved minutes from its meetings um that is you know this is a legal issue so i think we need to be clear on what we are agreeing to with uh attorney carball writing on the behalf of the town can i speak i feel um when you're laying out your case for anything you'll state what your opinion is in the beginning and then all of the rest of your talk is supporting your first your opinion and i think it's worded correctly because he's feel it feels it states that there is no violation and then in the discussion as attorney corbo just stated this is why um but there is there there was a violation and he said there was a violation on on uh may 24th but so. we re but we remedied it so overall we remedied it by bringing it up again and fixing it because it was not they were not correct minutes so i would just say that you know we could say this for the seventh and for the tenth unequivocally but to say it for the 21st i believe there needs to be um a different sentence that there was a violation but we remedied it as soon as we were able to in my opinion oh sorry um as far as like you don't want to like give like a lot of wiggle room and you're like casting doubt over what you're saying. I mean, it just sounds like ambiguous. Just, you know, go forth with what, what you got here. But if it's true, Jackie, why would there be doubt? Well, well, why exactly? So why are you doubting it? No, but that's Explain. this statement as it reads now, is it true is, is what I'm saying. Yes, it is. So true. to rewrite it um, with more specificity, Mm -hmm. then you take out that doubt and it's accurate. I think it's accurate the way it is. I think that yeah, I, I find nothing wrong with it. I really don't. That's just the way things flow. Then it that statement does not represent me. Well, why don't we take a vote on it? And I just to clarify my original thoughts, it's turn this up but I after reading it and reading the discussion I'm okay personally with how attorney Corbo stated everything in the third paragraph and then how it spelled it out in the discussion now that I understand how kind of how Sue explained it as you're stating the facts now here's why those facts are true so I'm okay because I agreed with you D I mean I made a mark on there originally to say, well, we were in violation in that April 21st meeting, but then attorney Corbo's explanation to me and the fact that it's in the discussion section, I'm okay with how it is because now I don't feel that we're in violation because we took the correct steps to remedy it and did it properly. So I'm okay with how it's written here. Um, yeah. And all, and, you know, I would be in agreement with all of you, except that, you know, I write for a living and it's misleading to have this in the third paragraph as that first sentence. Um, oh. And it looks like, you know, again, we deny that there was any violation. There was a violation. There was a violation. We remedied this, but there was a violation. So that's, that's my point. Mm -hmm. And I think that with it noting that it says, um, the, you know, today's meeting on June 1st is kind of saying that, you know, that's why we're not, it's, you know, is referencing the meeting today is kind of, you know, putting everything into compliance at this point from how I'm understanding it. Mm -hmm. okay. So should we take a vote at this section to approve or not approve this, or should we look at the rest of everything and do it as a whole? I think for this section, do a vote on it and just move on to something else. I'll second that. At least get the ball rolling. All right. So, Jackie, can you restate your motion just so it's there? Well, I, 
um, let's see, that um, paragraph, the, the um, paragraph, the way that the paragraph three is worded is, um, would is what we wanna say in our letter or something to that effect. <laughs> I'm terrible. And I, and I too write for, I used to write for a living too, but <laughs> in fact, you may even see some of my work in the dictionary of occupational titles and a few other publications, but hey. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point. Um, okay, so I make a motion that we accept paragraph three as, as is. Second, that, second to that motion yeah. too. I know you had seconded it earlier, but maybe just if you were going to do it, do it again. Yep, I just did second. Okay. Can you hear me? So the motion is on the table to accept paragraph three as it's written. We'll take a vote on it. So Jackie Gardner. I vote in favor of accepting paragraph three as is. And Sue Audet. I accept it. And Dee Shabazz. I don't accept it, no. And Jamie Wagner, I do accept that. So now going through, is everybody, should we now start looking at the background label part of the letter and see if there's any discussion within that? Can you forward the letter there, Sue? Sorry, yep. Nice. I'm going off of my hard copy. So D, whenever, mm -hmm. or Jackie, you guys can just tell her to scroll up whenever you need. Oh, so. okay. Cause I'm, I'm reading mine off of my tablet. All right. So D, just let her know when you want to yeah. go Move forward. I'll be right back, ladies. Thirty, and we closed so the public had to make sure our window was closed. So you can continue.
Okay, you can continue, Sue. Did you read, did you get the last paragraph or no? On this page or the next page? This page here. I think I may have cut it off, so just let me know. Mm hmm you can continue. Okay. Bonifaz is spelled um, incorrectly there. Oh, it is. Uh-huh. Yep. Should be an I. Are we stopping at the discussion part and then we'll do this discussion separate or should we continue and do everything as a whole or do we want to approve the background section before we go to discussion? I think I think unless it's an objection, we should just keep going. Sounds good. Sounds good to me too. Okay, you could advance up, Sue. <laughs> Okay, you can advance. Mm -hmm. Okay, you continue.
Attorney Carbo, can you explain the repeated phrase naturally flow from the board's discussion? Yes, uh, thank you through you, Madam Chair. Um, so the, the idea here is that the meeting notice has to describe the topic that the board anticipates will be discussed. And within that topic, the board can discuss anything that is related to or naturally flowing from that discussion. So in this matter, the purpose of the meeting was to discuss the objections and the appeals that had been received. Mm -hmm. However, as part of that, um, an objection was made that that discussion should be postponed until after the discussion of the open meeting law complaint. And so in that respect, the open meeting law complaint was intertwined with the substantive discussion of the objections and everything that the board discussed, at least as I observed it, was within the context of the objections and whether or not the board's discussion should wait until after the open meeting law discussion took place. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, can you continue up, Sue? Attorney Corbo, do you feel that there's any reason to mention in just to keep us on point um, in the conclusion or anywhere that we agree to do the um, you know open meeting law training or anything like that, or do you feel like it's just not necessary to add that? Um, I would defer to you um, and the board, Madam Chair, if you wish to include that. Um, I don't think that it's harmful to the the board's position to do so yes that would be the only thing for you guys that i would ask if you feel like we should add it i mean i i know that if i agree to do that then i'm gonna do it but i know how sometimes things will fall through the cracks and if it's in there and we it's in writing that we'll just sure that it gets done no i i agree um i have a question as to why on this last paragraph, May 4th meeting, um, so all, I mean, all the other meetings are referenced except the April 21st two minute meeting um, and available on YouTube. Is there a reason why that's not included there? Attorney Carbo? Yes, through you, Madam Chair. So in this section, we're only discussing the board's discussion of the May 4th open meeting law complaint. Mm -hmm. And so the May 4th open meeting law complaint was not discussed at that prior meeting in April. Um, and so the point of this is to, to demonstrate that um, there's a video of the discussion that took place on May 7th and a discussion and a video of the discussion that took place on May 10th. And um, the idea behind the, the case law and the decisions of the attorney general is that when a board discusses something that is either not in their meeting notice or not sufficiently described in the meeting notice, then the cure for that is to discuss it at a subsequent meeting and to have that discussion be made available to the public. Because the point of the open meeting law is that the public have an opportunity to, to view your deliberations. And so the point of this last paragraph is to demonstrate that um, even if um, 
it's found that you shouldn't have been discussing the May 4th open meeting law complaint on May 7th, that the availability of the video and the subsequent discussion would cure any violation that might have occurred. But, but that being said, if there is a video of the April 21st meeting, um, I would be happy to, to provide that as well. Thank I just you. wouldn't put it there. I would put it somewhere else. Yes, please do. Uh, hyperlink within the letter or however it's it's to be added. Okay. Um, through you, Madam Chair, to the town clerk, do you know if that meeting was recorded on the 21st? And if so, is that it was. recording still available? Uh, as far as I know, it still is. Yes. Okay. It was available a couple of days ago because I reviewed it. Ah, very good. Okay. Sue, can you send me that? Sure. Thanks. Um, okay. And in fact, if they went to that YouTube channel, it should be right there. All the meetings should be listed. It's actually right on the top of the uh, minutes. Mm, yeah, for April 21st. Yeah. It's right there. Right. Complete video is available mm -hmm. online. Jamie is not in the meeting. I think she might have gotten kicked out. Sean, any assistance? Oh, where'd she go? <laughs> uh oh. She keeps getting kicked out. Yeah. I was checking to see. I do not see her as an attendee either. No, she's, she got kicked out. Let me quickly text her. Looks like she's coming back. Oh, there she is. Okay, she beat me. Sorry, guys, I'm back. <laughs> Apparently, I just it's hit a threshold and it just likes to kick me out every time. Um, okay, so Jamie, I don't know where you um, cut out, but we, we are, we're all in agreement that I will include a link to the April 21st, um, the a link to the recording of the April 21st meeting. That sounds good to me. Thank you. All right, do we, you guys, did you guys vote, make a motion or vote, or do we need to do that, or it's just kind of like a housekeeping yeah, thing? Yeah, real quick, Sue, can you go back a page, please? Thank you. So I just noticed, uh, Attorney Carbo, on your summation of these uh, different meetings, that um, it does not include um, any reference within your summations to, um, you know, making April twenty first is also a remedy a null and void. So. I, I think I understand why you would not, but um, that would be part of the, the meeting minutes and a summation of these different meetings in terms of the conversations that flowed, that that was uh, part of also a possible well, th Through you, Madam Chair. Um, that's right, I did not address that in this letter. Um, you know, this is a, a complaint about meeting minutes and approval of meeting minutes um, and what happened at that um, at the May 7th meeting. 
Um, there was a complaint about what happened at the April 21st meeting, um, but there was no um, majority vote to um, agree on a resolution of that complaint. So that complaint has been submitted to the Office of the Attorney General and um, they will make a decision as to how to proceed. Um, but in the meantime, it's it's my opinion that that is not um, the subject of this complaint and that there is no reason to um, address that issue here. Does anybody have suggestions on wording of in the conclusion to add um, about the the review of open meeting law trainings, or is there a good way to kind of state that if we want to add it, or if we don't want to add it? Uh, Madam Please. Chair, through you, if I could suggest in that um, last paragraph, um, uh, Sue, can you? scroll up to that yep so in the conclusion um i i would say that um in addition the board intends to pursue open meeting law training through an approved program personally oh um i think we just leave it the way it is because um we because there were other like other trains and different things of that nature i i just don't see it i mean it's I, I i just don't see it in that personally i mean i'm not objecting to it but i just don't see any added value that it's given it d do you have any thoughts on that um no i you know i think it needs to if if this is what we're submitting needs to go as is and not misrepresent um what we're doing because although that was said as an aspiration i don't see any indication that we're moving towards um any trainings because then the other question that i would have as far as like with training i mean how many of the other committees and boards that in the, in the town of amherst have had training on this particular matter i mean in the open meeting i'm not i'm not, I'm not saying that we can't get it but is there the really isn't anything available. And the way I see it, I, I think that we should be able to, you know, read and establish what our own guidelines are using the open meeting law. Um, I, I don't understand why we can't design, design and develop something and even maybe talk to some of the other committees that are in town as far as like that, how do they handle it and whether or not they have any materials. That's the route I would rather go. Well, the open meeting law guide is given out yeah. by mm -hmm. our office so mm -hmm. so other yeah. boards and committee members when they are sworn into office receive the open meeting law guide mm -hmm. okay. um okay so when i oops, when i was on agcom i thought and i don't know if i'm just thinking of something different i thought there was something that came around i don't know if it was annually or every couple of years that it was like a thing that i did from home and i feel like it was on open meeting law where you like i mean is that that's that, nope that's conflict of interest okay sorry yep. Yeah, about that. But, but I've worked at, you know, at government agencies before, whereas I pretty much was a program coordinator for that. And then, like I said, different people have different styles as far as like how they, you know, uh, set things up. So, you know, be up to us on how we want to do it. Because again, I, you know, and even like when people were talking about as far as like how the, um, um, I know this, I'm sidetracking, but as far as like when you look on the website, I have not seen any committee that, um, that was announced for an, for a meeting for for as a, as a lay person where i can sit down and understand directly what was going on with that but that's like i said that was a little side thing on that one so again I, everybody should be in as far as i'm concerned to develop their own style and their own uniqueness for their for their committees i mean certainly we certainly can put that on the agenda for when we finally sit down and talk about Mm -hmm. uh, okay. processes, mm -hmm. okay. protocol, onboarding, all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important, again, 
uh, in our position as board of registrars, um, which is supposed to be transparent and democratic, um, I would appreciate more training instead of less. And, um, you know, to go through our roles and responsibilities as a board of registrar, I, that is important. Also, we were given, we were given a lot of stuff for that. Yes, I know. But I think it warrants discussion regarding uh, interaction with uh, mm -hmm. the town, the charter, petitions, et cetera. We need to go through scenarios. Again, mm -hmm. protecting the vote and yeah, protecting the I, I, I hear you. And that's why I like to read and, and get all that you know, materials down and try and figure out where I'm going. Well, I, I that, that was one of my first things as far as like I digress for a second. Yeah, but we're digressing. Like Let's stick to this for now. No, I I, what I'm, what I'm saying is this, Dee, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But as far as like when you took your job, you should have mm -hmm. taken it responsible enough to accept and read the materials that you were given. Mm -hmm. That's all and I'm I, saying. I did. I did. So okay. again, included the open meeting law. Um, thank you, Jamie, for making that suggestion. But um, I may be in uh, agreement with Jackie here in that unless we are going to um, stick to uh, these trainings and actually incorporate them into um, board of uh, registrars uh, procedures, I would not want to misrepresent any remedy that is not actually in place with the board of registrars. That's all. That sounds acceptable to me for sure. Um, so I'm going to make a motion to accept attorney Corbo's letter as presented to submit to the attorney general's office. I second it. All right. With a second, let's take a vote. Um, Jacqueline Gardner. I'm in favor of accepting the letter as is. Do I that? Affirmative. D. Shabazz. I abstain. And Jamie Wagner votes to accept it as presented for submission. Okay, thank you. So I will, um, I will get this finalized. I'll sign it. I'll include the attachments. And I will um, have that email to the Office of the Attorney General um, by Friday. And we'll, get CCs. we'll get CCs of the final copy. Yes. Terrific. All Thank right. you. Um, with that being the last item on the agenda, aside from the unanticipated topics, um, I know we didn't anticipate scheduling that meeting for the um, executive session. So if people have a suggestion for a date for that, do we have a, any sort of time constraints on that too that we should meet? I don't know if that was brought up earlier. It's been a long meeting, so I kind of forgot. We were going to um, email each other what good okay. dates were for everybody. We're going to do that. All and right. Plus, you were going to check with the town manager too. Okay. Is there any other um, items that need to be brought up? So. All right. I make a motion to adjourn today's meeting. I second. second it. Oh, good. Right. Should we form do a vote? So, Jacqueline Gardner. I'm in favor of adjournment. Do, now you can say that. <laughs> Do I that? In favor. It's official. Shabazz. Yes. And Jamie Wagner, yes. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, too. you too. Thank you, Attorney thank Corbo. You. All right. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh oh. Okay. You disappeared on us. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>